Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse Chapter 101-125 Chapter 101, Treasures So, how about we take care of our loot of war here? Bai Zeman proposed as he gazed with impossible to hide excitement at the objects before him. I agree. Shang Guanbing Shui nodded and even her natural cold expression had largely melted due to the heat in her eyes. Chen He and Liang Peng didn't even think about it when they nodded. In front of the group of four, on a table inside a building that had not been demolished during the previous battle against the First Order, several objects lay there, some glowed and attracted attention as if they wanted to be taken immediately, while others released a special magical aura around them. These objects were twelve treasure orbs among which there were two rare ones and there were also two skill scrolls, all the loot of war obtained after being victorious. While it was true that the danger of first order creatures was overwhelming, even more so when they were in groups, if an existence managed to overcome that danger and emerge victoriously then it was highly plausible that they would become rich overnight as the number of treasures that could be acquired were in massive amounts. 13 Treasure Orbs even Bai Zeman himself had not had that many orbs in his hands despite all the dangers he had faced since day one. The four took an orb in each hand and squeezed it tightly causing bright flashes of light to be released as the orbs disappeared and new items appeared on the large table. A few seconds later, the thirteen orbs had disappeared, and in their place were thirteen items. Before anyone stepped forward, Chen He looked at Bai Zeman and offered, I think you should be the first one to choose. Although we all helped and did our part, the reality is that the final major part was done by you. Shang Guanbing Shui said nothing about it and Liang Peng sighed before waving his hand to indicate that he too did not object even if the greed was there. Seeing that no one objected and were at least as sensible, Bai Zeman nodded and stepped forward, then I won't hold back. Bai Zeman looked at the treasures on the table one by one and after touching them briefly the information of each one flashed in his retina one after another. There were some treasures that he already possessed, such as, piercing glove, hurricane necklace, blazing ring, there was even another Xian Yuan sword. But there were also some treasures that Bai Zeman currently lacked. Earth bracelet, rare grade treasure when equipped it automatically increases magic by plus 10. Once per day you can use the skill Earth Spike. Earth Spike, raises from the ground a 2 meter high Earth Spike capable of piercing the defenses of a small armored vehicle. The Earth Bracelet was a rare grade item that increased an equivalent of 5 stat levels just by equipping it and at the same time granted the wielder the ability to activate an attack skill capable of turning the tide of a battle if used correctly. Bai Zeman was not polite and took it for himself before observing the rest. Velocity Boots Normal grade treasure extremely light, easy to wear, and automatically adapt to the body. When equipped, agility plus 10. The only boots Bai Zeman had owned so far had been destroyed during his battle to the death against the first blazing beetle, the first first order creature he knew of. Since then, although he had acquired several red treasure orbs, he had not been lucky enough to obtain a pair of boots to replace the previous ones. Now he could finally wear a pair again and increase his agility by another notch. In order not to break the balance and harmony that had grown in the group after several days of living together and shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder battles, Bai Zeman decided not to be greedy and take the other rare treasure. Besides, he already had a Xian Yuan sword so there was no point in taking it for himself anyway. However, Lilith appeared with a wild idea and pointed out as if she was excited. You can be like Kirito and wield two swords at the same time. Look, you even wear black and everything. Bai Zeman couldn't help but look in her direction. He looked at her with his eyes wide open as if he was looking at an alien and if it wasn't for the circumstances he would have definitely asked her if demons watched anime too. Even so, he couldn't help but say, aren't you afraid of copyright? Lilith replied, copyright? Bah. We can just say that we're using a set of words and that's all the fact that this beauty mentions that name should be a high compliment, don't you think? Unconsciously, Bai Zeman nodded and ignore the joke not so joke at the end. But. Seriously, Lilith knew that anime? Bai Zeman didn't know whether to laugh or cry at the revelation. Bai Zeman, 
what are you talking about? Shang Guanbing Shui looked at him dumbfounded. Forget it. He shook his head and continued to look at the treasures. Bai Zeman, being the biggest contributor, also picked up a normal treasure dagger and a small pearl that slightly increased the mana. He would use those two treasures for his direct subordinates in the future. Besides that, he did not pay attention to the two skill scrolls since one of those skills he had already learned and the other one did not suit his fighting style. However, he remembered Kong Lan and hesitated. One of them was Elephant Skin, the passive skill before First Order Bronze Skin. The other scroll was a First Order Level 1 skill called Poisonous Cloud. Poisonous Cloud, First Order Skill, Level 1, releases a cloud of toxic gas with a width of 3x3 meters in front of the user. Uninfected enemies of level 15 and below will die immediately after inhaling the poison and those above level 20 are completely immune. It needs to consume 5 mana points to activate. Kong Lan currently lacked an active magic skill that would allow her to better defend herself as she only possessed a healing skill at the moment. Take it. Shang Guanbing Shui interrupted his thoughts and looked at him with clear eyes as she said, Chen He is right in saying that 60% of the entire plan was completed by you anyway. Even if you take a little more I don't think it's necessarily wrong. Bai Zeman looked at her a little surprised and couldn't help but have his impression of her improve slightly. Although Shang Guanbing Shui was boorish and sometimes even a nuisance, she was also a smart, capable, and strong woman. Moreover, she was also not shameless, and even with her hatred or annoyance for men, she did not hesitate to praise someone or point out their achievements when they deserved it. In the end, Bai Zeman gave her a natural smile and also picked up the skill scroll to hand it to Kong Lan later. After all, he still remembered his earlier promise to her, and if he wanted to form his own power he needed his subordinates to trust his word. It's been almost an hour since the sounds outside stopped. Gao Min whispered as her worried eyes occasionally turned in the direction of the front door. To avoid any trouble, after Bai Zeman and Chen he killed all the zombies on the first three floors, the survivors actively moved wooden shelves along with tables, chairs and all sorts of things that could serve as an obstacle, blocking the stairs and the back entrance of the building. This meant that when the group of four returned they would definitely use the front door so that place became the central focus of everyone in this moment of anxiety and apprehension. Fan Wu and Li and A bit their lower lip when they heard the worried tone in the voice of the usually optimistic Gao Min. If even she, who had managed to keep her mind clearer than anyone else after going almost a week without eating properly, could not keep calm, how could Fan Wu and Li and A feel calm? Don't worry. Wu Yujun's voice attracted the attention of the three friends as well as some closer survivors, think carefully. If something bad had happened then those beasts would already be running towards us considering the number of people alive in here, don't you think? Then, since we haven't faced even the slightest of dangers even after so long, it is most likely that Bing Shui and the others have come out victorious. Her words contained belief and also great attractive power as they made a lot of sense causing the eyes of many nearby survivors to shine again. Her three friends also perked up noticeably and looked at her with a hint of admiration as they thought that the daughter of a high-ranking politician really was different, her talent for controlling the masses with her sweet and tender words was outstanding to say the least. But... Then why haven't they come back yet? A survivor who had been rescued from Jiao Long's tyrannical leadership pointed out in a still unsure voice, I mean... If everything really went well, then why are the four leaders still missing? People began to mutter under their breath when they heard those words. Some of them even felt that they had been abandoned but did not dare to say it out loud as even they themselves did not want to admit or think about such a fearful idea. After all, it was clear to everyone present that if the people with proper weapons and enough courage to fight left without them, then 90% of those present would easily die and the other 10% would have a small chance of surviving a while longer if luck was on their side. Immediately everyone looked at Fu Suifeng and the rest without taking their eyes off them. It was as if they were afraid that the next second the four of them would disappear too and abandon them. Wu Yujun was smart, so she was already expecting someone to notice that little loophole. However, before she had the need to say anything, 
the door that was firmly closed creaked softly and opened wide. Under everyone's surprised eyes, Bai Zimen, Chen He, Shang Guan Bing Shui, and Liang Peng walked in one after another. Some of them were carrying weapons that they did not have before, while others seemed to be unchanged at least on the surface. However, the most important thing was that they all seemed intact and had returned. Thank God! They really are back! Wu Yujun was right after all. They won. Bai Zimin and the others did not know how to react to hearing the excited murmurs of the survivors. Moreover, seeing some of them collapsing on the floor with weak knees and some even shedding tears of joy and relief, the four had no idea what was going on. Not knowing what was happening and not caring too much about the others, Bai Zimin clapped his hands once and silenced everyone before saying with a stern expression, Everyone, listen carefully. We have completely annihilated every living creature that is considered an enemy within at least five kilometers with this place as the center. We have also taken care of the forest blocking our path to the exit and the creatures inside it. Now, you guys have to get to work collecting the meat of some mutated beasts and carrying the rest of the useful corpse to the buses. The survivors couldn't help but smile delightedly and their eyes shone brightly as they listened to Bai Zeman. However, Chen He's next words encouraged them all even more. The sooner you finish, the sooner we can leave the university and start seeking shelter from the government and the army. I hope all those willing to work will give their best effort this time. Leave the university and be sheltered by the government and the military. A place with established rules and social order. Although most of the survivors said nothing, many of them hoped to return to the embrace of the government and be sheltered by the rules of society. After all, no one was really willing to work hard for a small bowl of rice or a piece of bread. Lilith watched everything from the side and her eyes glittered with a tinge of amusement, this lower existence Chen He, sure is smart to give everyone motivation to work faster. Bai Zeman secretly sneered and said nothing. Who knows if Chen He was just trying to do what Lilith said or if even he himself still believed that the government and the army were standing firmly against the zombies and the other mutated creatures. Shang Guanbing Shui looked at her childhood friend out of the corner of her eye and her eyes glittered strangely. No one knew what she was thinking. More than 300 survivors started working immediately while the other more than a hundred were made up of those who were unwilling to yield to Bai Zemin's regime or who had been injured the day before during the chaos caused by some people when the platinum ape appeared. These injured people had received some auxiliary treatment but without doctors and the necessary equipment only so much could be done. As for Kong Lan's lesser healing skill, Bai Zemin was not willing to let her waste the only two daily uses on useless people since in cases of need he would need it. At this moment, one of the reasons why Bai Zemin wanted to leave the university once and for all was to find firearms and other assets. What he needed most were people willing to fight. Although workers were certainly necessary since there was no way he could do everything by himself, Bai Zemin lacked courageous people. No, instead of courageous people, he lacked an incentive great enough for that courage to awaken. But outside this large university campus, there would undoubtedly be many hungry or needy people willing to do anything to get food and safe shelter. Just like now, the majority of survivors willing to work hard were mainly those girls who were rescued from the female dormitory or those who were saved from the hands of Jiao Long. As for the initial group of survivors who had not suffered greatly or had not seen the true cruelty with which the strong treated the weak, they were the ones who were still living in a fantasy world. A fantasy world from which they would soon be forced to wake up by the hard way. The survivors willing to work began to move immediately because just as Chen He had said, the sooner they finished the task, the sooner they could leave the university grounds and really get into the outside world. Whether it was more dangerous or not, no one knew. But they did know that no one wanted to be in this gloomy place anymore. Under the care of Fu Suifeng and the rest, the survivors separated into groups of different sizes and began working together to remove the flesh of the evolved beasts that did not have an overwhelmingly high defense like the Jiao Lao snakes. When they wanted to remove the Jiao Lao snakes scales they realized that it was simply impossible so they had no choice but to set them aside to be dealt with when they had the necessary tools. Apart from the four evolved snakes, 
they gradually began to take care of the bodies that were in relatively better condition, as for the body of the First Order Blazing Beetle, Bai Zeman had repeatedly warned them that they should not touch it as the flesh had been affected by the corrosive skill of one of the snakes. All those who aimed or studied at Beijing University generally desired important and well-paid positions in society so at first, it had been difficult to adapt to the large amount of blood and gruesome sight of such beasts similar to legendary prehistoric creatures. However, as the days passed after caring for the first blazing beetle, each of them had become used to getting blood on their hands and the smell of iron was no longer as unbearable as in the past. This caused the work speed to increase by another small notch, proving that humans were also creatures adaptable to change. When the world made a 180 degree turn, the races living in that world needed to turn 180 degrees and adapt as quickly as possible in order to continue to exist as in the past. Otherwise, what awaited that race at the end of the road was only the cruel annihilation. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. While the survivors were doing their part in order not only to get out of this place faster but also to receive better treatment and not be seen as useless burdens, Bai Zeman had isolated himself in a room of a building close to the place but far enough away not to be disturbed by the noise of the workers. Sitting on a small couch away from the window, away from the door, and with his back pointed to the wall to prevent being caught off guard, Bai Zeman smiled and rubbed his hands together as he said excitedly, Finally free time. Hurry up and let's see those messages from earlier. Lilith sat down beside him and stretched out her pristine hand indicating for him to take it. Even she wanted to see the records acquired and evolved by him. He he. Bai Zeman chuckled and took her hand gently, letting it rest on his leg. He could still remember the first time they had physical contact, it had been practically suffocating for him. But now, something as small as holding hands didn't affect him greatly even though she was a succubus. Soon, all the records from before began to flash in his retina. Bai Zeman ignored and let pass those he was already aware of and simply focused and paid attention to those he had not yet observed. Crimson Blood Judgment, Third Order Skill, Level 5 obliterates everything in its path without distinguishing ally or enemy. The power of crimson blood judgment depends on the power of the flame used and the power of blood manipulation. Requirement 1 You need a second order flame to activate or a first order flame boosted with first order wind in conjunction with the exclusive blood manipulation skill. Requirement 2 Blood spear made up of more than 220 mana points and at least have control over 200 magic points. That's an exclusive skill which is great. Lilith pointed out cheerfully before her mood returned to normal. She sighed and said a little regretfully, it's a pity that you are currently merely first order and don't own a particularly strong flame or else this skill of yours called Crimson Blood Judgment would become the bane of your enemies. Bai Zeman nodded, but his mood was high. While it was true that it was impossible to use Crimson Blood Judgment in direct combat due to its destructive peculiarity and difficulty to control, it was an ultimate trump card that he could take advantage of if he used it correctly. The records engraved on his soul continued to flash in his retina and he, by simply joining hands, allowed Lilith to see everything without hiding anything of the past few hours from her. Title 1 Hit to Kill, when using spears, harpoons, tridents, or any throwing object, your chance to cause a critical hit to the enemy increases by 10%. Keck. Another 10% critical hit. Bai Zeman grimaced strangely and his eyes had an evil glint in them as he said, At this rate, I won't reach 100% and be able to inflict fatal hits left and right. Lilith rolled her eyes and said in a coquettish tone, Kid, do you think it's that easy to reach 100% in a tracking statistic? Very few have achieved it so far. Kid. Bai Zeman couldn't help but look at her and pointed out, what part of me looks like a kid to you? Soon, however, he regretted it as he realized that he might have fallen into one of Lilith's traps again. Indeed, she looked at him and smiled like a charming little fox as she said in a whisper, I don't know. How about letting me check your body carefully? I promise I'll be nice to you. Bai Zeman's eyes flashed and he said defiantly, You can act flirtatious and all, but at the end of the day you are a virgin succubus. You just wait. When my power is great enough, 
I will definitely spank you into an obedient girl. Ho ho. Lilith smiled brightly and her ruby eyes shone slightly, I see our little Zeman is growing courage so you want to turn me into your personal good girl? Kia little Zeman, you sure know how to drive this big sister crazy. Cough. Bai Zeman coughed to clear his throat at the sight of her eyes and quickly looked away. She hadn't used any skills but her innate charm alone was terrifying. He was sure she was holding back and restraining herself, lowering her natural charming aura to the level of a mortal. Otherwise, it was likely that he would have become a puppet by now. The more time he spent at her side interacting with her, the more Bai Zeman realized how terrifyingly powerful and beautiful Lilith was. Sometimes, he couldn't help but wonder why she didn't make him her puppet anyway. If it was her natural charm, with no mana, no magic, and without using a skill, the soul record shouldn't punish her for doing something like winning the heart of a human man. So why was she going to all this trouble? It was a question that would remain unanswered for a long time. Bai Zeman decided to stop joking around and Lilith gave him a slightly worried look before moving slightly back without looking directly at him for fear of turning him into a toy. After a few seconds, she quietly asked, Are you okay? She felt a little bad as for the first time he was fighting back at her teasing, which she found amusing and interesting and caused her to slightly lose control over her own natural charm. Feeling slight guilt in her voice, Bai Zeman acted as if nothing had happened and smiled refreshingly as he said in a somewhat complex voice, Everything's fine. Although I must admit that you're really awesome, Lilith. Lilith's attention was drawn by his words and seeing him acting calm, neither looking at her with strange eyes nor raising his guard against her, she secretly sighed in relief. I know I'm awesome, didn't I tell you that several times? She jokingly boasted before asking curiously, but... What part of me do you find amazing? Bai Zeman thought for a moment before deciding it was okay to show her. His absorbed and earned records quickly slid back. Soon, he reached what he was looking for and stopped. This is... Lilith's eyes widened slightly before they flinched unnoticed as she saw the message before her eyes and the information of the contents. That is the skill I acquired several days ago. Bai Zeman responded honestly as revealed to her and showed off his stone heart skill. Now I understand. Lilith sighed and shook her head softly. Regardless of how you think about it, it's not natural for your behavior and attitude to remain calm and indifferent after killing a person for the first time. But with a passive third order skill entering the scene things are different. What do you mean? Bai Zeman asked sensing that there might be important information for him regarding his stone heart skill. Before that, I need you to be honest with me. Lilith stared at him and asked in a soft voice, Bai Zeman, why does this skill especially target the opposite sex? The soul record literally visualizes and utilizes the lived experiences of every existence, storing everything in something similar to a separate file as if it were a supercomputer. Each existence has its own file and within that file everything lived is recorded, giving form to incredible skills and powers depending on the records acquired through training, experiences, or simply by absorbing records from other living beings. After a brief pause, Lilith continued, According to this record, your stone heart skill was born from a past trauma that transformed and created your current personality. So, surely a woman was involved, wasn't she? Otherwise, this skill wouldn't especially focus on protecting your heart against women. Bai Zeman looked to no particular point and his memory went back to the past. His voice was casual and without any particular emotional fluctuation as he slowly narrated, In the past, there was a girl two years older than me that I really liked a lot. The me at the time was barely a teenager, and I didn't have enough courage to confess my interest in her. He paused and couldn't help but laugh as he slowly said, You know what I mean, don't you? The innocence of a young boy. However, my best friend, another young man my age who was in my high school, pushed me several times urging me to ask that girl for a chance. In the end, under his constant prodding and moral support, I decided to try my luck. I mean, why not? It wasn't like I was losing anything anyway. To my surprise, 
she agreed to give me a chance to know her. Lilith paid attention to his words but mostly in his eyes and in his voice. However, he really seemed indifferent as he recounted the past as if it really wasn't something important to him anymore. This made her feel relieved as the first step one had to take to get better was to overcome past traumas, otherwise one would always be stuck without being able to move forward properly. She and I started dating. Ah, but we weren't boyfriend and girlfriend by any means. I was just head over heels for her, after all, she was my first crush as a teenager. Bai Zeman pointed out before continuing, time passed and everything was going well until almost a year later during which we were getting to know each other and having good chemistry, I decided to ask her to officially go out as boyfriend and girlfriend. Here, Bai Zeman couldn't help but shake his head and said in a somewhat sarcastic tone, the answer I got back then I can never forget. That girl teased me mercilessly and told me that she and I were two people from different worlds since her family had considerable power while my family was just a small family of common workers. The sarcastic tone in his voice disappeared and now returning to that casual indifference he continued, Well, I was crying in the corners for a long time after that. However, eventually I came to learn that this girl was actually my best friend's fiancé. Apparently, they were both engaged by their families and were just enjoying themselves laughing behind my back. When I found out about this and came out of the shadow of depression, finally getting over this girl, I snuck into the male dorm one night, and well. My one-time best friend had to spend several months in the hospital after that. Since no one knew about me or saw me and the male dorm was crawling with men, no one could point the finger at me, the depressed guy. As for the girl, to be honest I didn't care about her and simply learned my lesson. Bai Zeman shrugged and concluded before looking at Lilith. Although I don't care about the past anymore, I did become very cautious and don't trust women easily. So what do you think? MMH. Lilith closed her eyes softly and after about a minute seemed to come to a conclusion. She looked at him and said calmly, I think I know what happened. Bai Zeman nodded waiting for her to continue. Their hands were still close together as he still needed to see two more records and she also wanted to see his progress up close so they simply remained seated in the same manner. Heartbreaks are normal and while not everyone does, almost everyone experiences one throughout their lives. Lilith slowly explained, judging by your voice, I don't sense that you hate this girl nor can I sense any trace of positive feelings towards her. She's simply someone transitory in your life, isn't she? M. That's right. Lilith continued, however, as a consequence of your high magical control and large reserve of natural mana, the soul record probably gave special importance to the natural records that were deep in your soul. The wound in your heart was so deep that, when united with the mana in movement, that record was magnified and resulted in this skill called Stone Heart. The mana of the world constantly generates magic. Lilith continued slowly, that magic, like mana, floats everywhere constantly and without special purpose. Your magic stat was too high from the first moment the soul record came to this world called Earth since your body was able to support a higher amount of mana inside it thanks to your especially abnormal soul. Bai Zeman listened carefully and finally understood many things resulting in him finally accepting that his stone heart skill was probably born as a consequence of his past records and his soul itself. The world was similar to a gigantic vessel and inside it there was magic and mana floating in the air, occupying most of the space but being energy without matter it was as if it was not there. Each being or existence had a statistic called magic when the soul record reached the different worlds. This statistic allowed that existence to come into contact with the magic that roamed the world and the higher the statistic the greater the amount of magic to which they could have access. In short, magic and strength were not the same as magic damage and attack power, all four were similar and interconnected but at the same time different. Even so, magic and strength did influence the magic damage and attack power that a being could inflict on their enemies because the greater the strength or the greater the amount of magic to which a being could access through their magic stat, the greater the damage the enemy would receive upon receiving an attack. Sometimes, the soul record would make small mistakes during the first week of reaching a world because, as Lilith had mentioned repeatedly, 
each world was an infinity of possibilities and different rules. It was most likely that when reading Bai Zemin's life records and as a consequence of his soul being able to contain a vast amount of mana and his ability to access greater magical power of the world, the soul record gave special importance to his most traumatic record. How ironic! Bai Zemin didn't know whether to laugh or cry. He shook his head and said in a peculiar tone, to think that girl and that idiot would eventually end up helping me several years later haha. Bai Zeman, what are the requirements to evolve Stone Heart? Lilith furrowed her eyebrows slightly and asked in a funny tone of voice. Let me check. The Stone Heart skill has reached its maximum level and can evolve to the next order. To evolve, the following requirements must be met. Trust wholeheartedly in another being outside the comfort zone, 0-1. Falling in love, incomplete. Second order soul stone, 0 slash 3. W what the f asterisk ck. Bai Zeman almost fell backward when he saw the requirements needed to evolve the skill. Ironically, among the three requirements, the third one was the most easy in this case. Even though he was not confident in defeating a second order existence unless he could launch a surprise attack with his strongest skill, Crimson Blood Judgment. Even though he wouldn't necessarily be able to obtain a soul stone after killing the enemy. Wholeheartedly trusting another being outside the comfort zone. This requirement was probably as difficult as killing a first order existence in one hit while he had not yet evolved and without some control over the world's mana. As for her falling in love. Wasn't that crazy? Well, I'd be lying if I said I didn't expect something like that. Lilith shook her head softly and sighed. To evolve skills, it is often necessary to overcome the obstacles that the same skill imposes on us. In the end, Bai Zeman sighed and waved his free hand, forget it. It's not something necessary right now anyway. Stoneheart was a good skill currently as it was a protective measure for him in this new world. If someday the humans regain some peace, then he could start striving to evolve the skill. You have met the requirements to evolve skill bronze skin level 1 to level 4. Evolution requirements. Bronze skin, first order passive skill, level 1, dash level 2, stamina plus 240 naturally, complete. Level 2, dash level 3, stamina plus 260 naturally, complete, slash soul stone, 1 slash 1. Level 3, dash level 4. Stamina plus 280 naturally, complete, slash soul stone, 3 thirds. Currently, Bai Zeman had reached 282 natural stamina points and also had a couple of unclassified soul stones that he had obtained from different creatures. That's good. Bai Zeman smiled and concentrated on the skill, accepting the evolution. Four normal soul stones flew out of his backpack and were soon enveloped by a bright bronze colored light. The mana of the world surrounded the four stones and the magic began to transform everything into a strange energy that was different from anything Bai Zeman had felt so far. This is what happens when the soul record comes in contact with a skill and soul stones or different objects with soul power inside, Bai Zeman. Lilith also looked at the glowing light with interest and pointed out, myriads of races and countless beings have tried to understand what is that strange energy that is produced during the evolving process believing that it could be the greatest secret towards the real and absolute supremacy. The soul record was an entity that had existed since time immemorial, even when the god of the Bible, Lucifer, and different supreme existences rose in power, the soul record was already there and it was only because of it that these beings were able to go beyond. To this day, no one had managed to surpass what the soul record was capable of. Bai Zeman looked at the bright light and could not help but feel amazed. It was just a light, but for a moment he couldn't help but feel that even the beauty and charm of the beautiful Lilith beside him paled in comparison. Bronze Skin, First Order Passive Skill, Level 4, Your skin becomes much tougher than that of any living being before the awakening of mana. Increases stamina by plus 140 points. Curious, Bai Zeman looked at the Bronze Skin evolution requirements as his current stamina was really high. Level 4 Dash level 5, stamina plus 300 naturally, complete, slash soul stone, 
four ninths. At this rate won't I end up having skin as tough as hell? Bai Zeman couldn't help but wonder dumbfounded. Although he was complaining on the outside, the truth was that he was delighted on the inside as the higher his stamina, the crazier he could become now that he had acquired the blood berserker job. However, Lilith was thinking about something else. She couldn't help but shudder as she said, your current stamina could be compared to a third order human or a second order savage beast. Could it be that you want to punish me in bed so badly? The corner of Bai Zeman's mouth constricted several times and he looked at her with a dead expression as he said in a low voice, You just wait, you damn perverted succubus. You just wait. While it was true that his stone heart skill had helped keep Bai Zeman sane and not lost in power thanks to his family, the one who had helped and supported him the most with her jokes and fun personality was undoubtedly the beautiful demoness at his side. Something he, perhaps, would never be able to thank her enough for. Bronze skin was not the only skill that had met the necessary requirements to evolve as Bai Zeman clearly remembered that the soul record informed him that he had two skills that could move to the next level or even to the next order depending on whether the other skill was at the maximum level or not. After searching through his skills for a moment, Bai Zeman found that the next skill was actually health boost, another unclassified passive skill. Evolution Requirements Health Boost, Unclassified Passive Skill, Level 3, Dash Level 4. Plus 100 Health Points Naturally, Complete. Soul Stone, 1 Slash 1. Bai Zeman did not hesitate and evolved Health Boost to the next level. However, he did not stop as immediately after checking the skill he realized that he had the necessary materials to evolve the skill again and met the requirements perfectly. Health Boost. Unclassified Passive Skill, Level 4, Dash Level 5. Plus 120 Health Points Naturally, Complete. Soul Stone, 3 thirds. Bai Zeman looked at the evolution requirements and couldn't help but point out in puzzlement, what's wrong? These requirements are quite a bit tougher than Bronze Skins considering Health Boost isn't even ranked yet. Different Skills, Different Paths. Lilith reminded him in a casual voice. Although they are both skills that influence your stats passively, they are two different skills and the final path they will reach will probably be completely different. True. Bai Zeman nodded and accepted the evolutionary process. A similar view to the previous case during the evolution process of bronze skin occurred with health boost. Bai Zeman could clearly feel how his entire body seemed to intangibly improve after the skill upgrade and even the air entering his body seemed to be slightly purified. The rune engraved deep within his soul became significantly more vivid and clear than in the past, slowly acquiring a faint light greenish glow. Health Boost, Unclassified Passive Skill, Level 5, Permanently Increases Health by Plus 60. Bai Zeman took a casual glance at the skills to see approximately the evolution requirements. After all, if he ended up dying because he didn't know how and when to grow his own power then it would be pathetic and lamentable. Even in death he would not be able to forgive himself. In the beginning, everything was fine, some skills had strange or complex requirements and some were relatively simpler in comparison. However, Bai Zeman's eyes almost fell out when he saw the evolution requirements of a particular skill. Special Forces Soldier, Unclassified Passive Skill, Level 5, Evolution Requirements. Kill Unclassified Enemies, 5000-5000. Kill First Order Enemies, 15-100. Kill Second Order Enemies, 0-10. Third Order Soul Stone, 0-1. By Zeman. Lilith. The room remained deathly silent for what seemed like an eternity. The silence had reached such a magnitude that from a distance one could hear the constant crackling of the flames still burning over the mutated forest. After a minute of silence, Bai Zeman asked quietly, So, what is this all about? His voice was soft, as gentle as the spring breeze. However, only he knew if he was so calm as he appeared on the outside. Lilith cleared her throat slightly and responded calmly, as I said, each skill is a different world. Some skills might have simpler requirements as there are several upgrades ahead and the difficulty scales slowly. 
However, there are also skills that reach maybe first order or second order before stopping completely making the difficulty of evolving between each order incredibly hard. After a somewhat awkward silence, Bai Zeman sighed and shook his head before standing up to stretch his body. The first requirement was already completed, the second was simpler since he had the strength but where was he supposed to find so many first order monsters? As for second order, Bai Zeman didn't dare to say that he could kill an enemy of that level with his current strength. But he had to kill ten as a third requirement? To make matters worse, he even needed a third order soul stone. With his current strength, a third order enemy could slap him to death with one finger. But even if he hypothetically managed to kill one with his life at stake, what were the chances of him obtaining a soul stone? You don't need to worry too much about such things. Lilith stood up and walked past him. While looking out the window, she slowly said, It hasn't even been two weeks since the soul record reached this world. You will have time to achieve different goals and when the world's mana starts to evolve, the strength of your enemies will also increase accordingly so you will be able to hunt at your leisure. Ha ha ha. That's supposed to make me feel better. Bai Zeman chuckled and shook his head before heading for the exit, forget it, Lilith. I'll just do what I can do right now. If I think too much about tomorrow, today might devour me before the day is over. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. The remaining two floors of the library were cleared and the zombie corpses were all moved upstairs before being locked in several rooms with the door firmly sealed. The sun fell and after nightfall, the survivors who were dealing with the flesh of the First Order beasts or the still useful parts of their bodies returned to the library which would be the temporary place where they would be staying. Because the Crimson Flames were flames that came from a Third Order active skill, even after many hours they still burned fiercely. The mutated forest that was plagued with mana due to the existence of the mana uterus was resisting the fire with that mana, but it would only be a matter of time before its entirety would turn to ashes and disappear completely. As long as the flames burned, they had no way to leave the university. However, the atmosphere was very lively at the moment. Those who worked hard looked with shining eyes at the blazing beetles' meat being cooked and swallowed silently. As a reward, the group leaders had agreed to let them eat as much meat as they wanted, which motivated them to work harder and made them even more excited. After all, the fact that First Order meat improved the body and gave stats was something Wu Yujun had purposely spread among the survivors to make them work harder. Praise for the four main leaders could be heard from every corner of the main floor. The windows had been sealed with large wooden bookcases and the still-functioning electric light was shining in all its splendor. Thanks to the efforts of the evolved fighters, all the creatures within a few kilometers had been wiped out. Therefore, they did not have to fear that a zombie would suddenly sneak in and threaten their lives. Compared to life in the gymnasium where they were cramped and restricted, this was certainly a great improvement. While some were silently delighted and others had shady expressions about the different treatment, Bai Zeman, Shang Guan Bing Shui, Chen He, Liang Peng, and Wu Yujun were in a separate second floor room having an important meeting about the next move for when the crimson flames were finally extinguished. Moreover, the current Wu Yujun was no longer the same as before. Wu Yujun was a beautiful woman but by no means a vase that only served to display her beauty as an ornament, she was also a very intelligent and capable woman in her own right. While she had not been useful in combat, from the first moment she was rescued from the female dormitory along with the rest of the survivors, Wu Yujun had demonstrated that even without the care or recommendation of Shang Guan Bing Shui and Chen He she also had certain credibility that allowed her to participate in important meetings and contribute to decision making. So far, the ideas Wu Yujun had put forward that had been implemented as a rule or as a push to increase work effectiveness, maintain order, or even to inflict fear and keep troublemakers at bay had not been just once or twice. Precisely for that reason, no one was particularly against her getting a little special treatment. After all, although she wasn't contributing physical labor, she was constantly coming up with brilliant and innovative ideas that were necessary for this new world where conventional thinking wasn't necessarily correct. However, under the astonished gaze of Bai Zeman, Liang Peng, and Chen He, Wu Yujun demonstrated that she was now not only a beautiful woman with a brilliant mind, 
but also able to stand up for herself. While standing in the center of the room and under the gaze of the four most powerful people in this group, Wu Yujun pointed to a plant in the corner of the room and the approximately one meter tall plant shuddered. After receiving a stimulus of some kind, the plant that was standing still suddenly shook fiercely and a leaf covered by a strange pale green aura shot out at full speed towards the opposite wall. Bang! The hard and firm concrete wall of the university library, which had been standing unshaken for so many years, was pierced by a plant leaf as if instead of a leaf it was a bullet. Bai Zeman raised an eyebrow and walked over to check, but before he could get too close the pale green energy disappeared and the small leaf gently glided through the air before falling to the ground, leaving a small hole in the wall along with tiny cracks that stretched for an inch or two with the impact site as the center. This. Liang Peng was dumbfounded and quickly ran forward to pick up the leaf. He looked at it several times and even threw it against the wall as if to check that it really was a normal leaf. Chen he looked at Wu Yujun and said in surprise, that was great. Yujun, when did you obtain such a powerful skill? Wu Yujun's face was slightly pale and some beads of sweat had started to form on her forehead. However, she had a beautiful smile that seemed to blossom happiness as she looked at her best friend with grateful eyes and slowly said, it came from Bing Shui. She didn't come back right away back then to defeat a first order beast and obtain a skill scroll for me. Liang Peng looked at Shang Guan Bing Shui with a bearish face and snorted, so you didn't come back to obtain a personal loot? And if things had gone wrong because of that what? You can take responsibility. Bai Zeman also looked at Shang Guan Bing Shui, waiting for her next reply. Just when Chen he wanted to say something, she indifferently remarked, the one who risked her life was me, not you. I don't want someone who is practically useless telling me what is right or wrong. She paused momentarily and pointed out, besides, wasn't Bai Zeman there? I didn't know you trusted me so much. Bai Zeman raised an eyebrow and commented casually. It's not about trust or distrust. Shang Guanbing Shui shook her head and looked at him with indifferent eyes before recalling, it's about facts. Until now, even though you are sometimes a brute, you always stood your ground and have never once lost. Back then, when we came up with the plan to wipe out the mutated forest and the First Order beasts, your voice seemed indifferent but you were brimming with confidence. Not confidence based on arrogance, but confidence in your own intelligence coupled with your personal strength. The room fell silent after those words and different glances fell upon her. After all, her previous comment was really strange. Lilith's seductive voice sounded next to Bai Zeman, looks like someone has paid quite a bit of attention to you hehe. Bai Zeman secretly shook his head. In fact, Shang Guan Bing Shui had not only been observing him, she had been observing everyone carefully since day number one, costumes, habits, skills, weaknesses. Everything. To know how to move according to possible consequences. Really a very impressive and terrifying woman. Forget it. Bai Zeman waved a hand and did not linger on that topic. After all, it was true that the person who had risked her life to obtain that scroll was Shang Guan Bing Shui herself and the plan did not include her in the battle against the First Order Beasts so she had not broken any rules of the group. Wu Yujun, you are currently level zero, aren't you? He asked as looked at her face slowly regaining its color after an abrupt expenditure of mana. She blushed and said somewhat embarrassed, yes. Level zero. With my current mana, I can use my skill only twice because the consumption is too great for my current self. Although Wu Yujun had obtained a powerful skill scroll, her level was too low and control over mana was simply deficient. However, as long as she had a little courage, it would only be a matter of time before she rose to become a powerful evolved fighter capable of contributing not only with her brain and ideas but also her personal combat strength. I see. Well, congratulations. Bai Zeman smiled slightly and nodded, I hope with all my heart that you will become stronger. He did not ask what skill she had as it would be extremely impolite and to some extent break the balance that had formed in the group after living together for almost half a month. Besides, if he asked that question, 
he would also have to reveal information about his own ability, which was not profitable from his point of view. Still, Bai Zeman was really happy and did not say those words casually. After all, if Wu Yujun became stronger, the more help he would have to start moving when they left the university once the Sea of Crimson Flames was extinguished. Chen He took a step forward and with a serious face proposed, How about now we start discussing what we will do when we leave here? Everyone's gaze changed slightly, as this was a giant checkpoint and too important. Currently, they had all formed a group to increase the chances of survival and to not let their own race be wiped out by the other races. However, upon leaving the university, they would not necessarily all take the same path, and the chances of splitting up to walk different pathways were very high as well. The only person who was 100% calm in reality was Bai Zeman. Beijing was a very large city and the number of inhabitants amounted to approximately 30 million in total. The city itself was composed of 16 major districts and two smaller counties while the population was evenly distributed in a large number of cities and even smaller towns or villages. Beijing University was located in Yanking District, which was composed of three large cities or sub-districts, 11 towns and four villages or rural townships, just northwest of the capital of China. Accurately, the university was located in one of the three large sub-districts, Rulin Subdistrict. I will head south. Bai Zeman broke the silence and said with determination glittering in his eyes, specifically speaking, I am heading in the direction of Chongping District. Yanking District bordered Huero District to the north and Chongping District to the south. He continued, My family is in Yangfeng and I have to get there as soon as possible. Another reason why Bai Zeman still harbored hope for his family was that Yang Fang was a small town with just over 50,000 inhabitants. This meant that even if many people mutated into zombies, it was still better than in densely populated places and the chances of survival would undoubtedly be much higher in such cases. Chen He shook his head and looked at Shang Guan Bing Shui and Wu Yujun before pointing at their targets, Bing Shui, Yu Jun, and I are moving south as well but we are aiming for Hadian District. That's where our families are located. Bai Zeman was by no means surprised because from the time he learned about Chen He's military background he had made his own guess regarding Shang Guan Bing Shui and Wu Yujun. Although he did not know exactly what their backgrounds were, just based on the fact that they were Chen He's childhood friends, he could easily assume that they belonged to the government or the military. In that case, it was natural for the three of them to head south since Yanking District was a bordering district of Beijing and beyond that, one would leave the capital. I guess we'll be temporary traveling comrades then. Bai Zeman smiled slightly and looked at the three people without his expression revealing his inner thoughts. We'll be in your care until then. Wu Yujun smiled brightly and two pretty little dimples formed on her cheeks as her eyes narrowed into a crescent shape. Seeing her sweet expression in contrast to her seductive body, Bai Zeman couldn't help but look at Lilith out of the corner of his eye and secretly thought that both women were like little foxes. As for Shang Guan Bing Shui, she said nothing for several seconds until she finally sighed and slowly said, I wonder if it will be that easy. Uh. Chen He looked at her puzzled and asked in confusion, What do you mean? It's nothing. She shook her head and did not continue the matter but Bai Zeman knew that her thoughts were exactly the same as his. In any case, everything would be proven when they found the first human campment. At that time it would come to light if China's army was able to put up a fight against the zombies, animals and mutated plants, or if they were barely holding out with pitiful strength. I will split up and head north. A deep voice interjected. Oh. Bai Zeman and the rest looked at Liang Peng who had been silent until now, with a hint of surprise. Is there anything that will take you north? Family perhaps? Chen He asked hesitantly. It's not that. My close family died in a car accident four years ago. As for the rest, I don't care if they're alive or not. Liang Peng sighed and shook his head before looking out the window and continuing. Before the world changed I was just a soul in sorrow wandering around this world and without any special purpose. But, now that the world has changed, I would like to look for myself. 
or at least a reason to exist other than just breathing. After hearing his words, everyone remained silent for a long time before they nodded in understanding. Although they knew that separations were highly probable to occur, after almost half a month of continuous living together, after countless battles against zombies or other evolved creatures in which they risked their lives shoulder to shoulder, it was inevitable to feel a slight tinge of reluctance to say goodbye. Bai Zeman clapped his hands and said with a smile, All right, everyone. Let's work hard to get out of here once and for all. With clear objectives, the group of five left the room and began to organize several survivors for tomorrow's work as well as patrolling the buildings around the library to avoid major problems. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Three days passed in the blink of an eye. Today, after the arrival of the first ray of light from the sun, the fourteenth day since the arrival of the soul record officially opened. Two weeks ago, the world as everyone knew it had completely changed to the point where it would be completely and utterly impossible to go back to the way it was in the past. Two weeks ago and just based on the percentage of students, professors, and other university staff, approximately 70-80% to 80 of humanity had been turned into zombies just like the ones in horror movies, fictional movies that in the past were fun but now everyone had been forced to be characters in a movie in which everyone was a secondary character. Fourteen days ago, going to bed and getting up the next day was normal, everyone considered these simple actions obvious and natural. Two weeks ago, opening the refrigerator and eating or going to a restaurant to eat was the most natural thing in the world for everyone, dates, outings with friends, meetings, dinners. However, for the past 14 days, one could go to bed but would not necessarily wake up the next day. For two weeks now, Food had become scarce and was now an asset more valuable than gold itself for which countless starving people would be willing to kill for a small piece of dry bread. In the once prestigious and lively Beijing University, zombies wandered and growled purposelessly while many survivors sobbed in some corner, fighting against fear and driven mad by the hunger that slowly ate away at their senses threatening to drive them insane. A few kilometers from the southern exit, a large patch of what in the past seemed to be a forest crackled with small crimson flames that a few seconds later were completely extinguished, leaving only ashes that with the passing of time would be swept away by the wind and forgotten in the river of time. Inside a room on the second floor of the library, lying on a mattress placed on the floor and casually covered with a pair of sheets, Bai Zeman slowly opened his eyes and yawned as he stood up. Good morning. A soft, sweet voice sounded a few feet away a voice he had grown accustomed to hearing over the past fourteen days. Looking toward the source of the sound, he saw the most perfect being he had ever known in his entire life. Even though it had been two weeks since she had appeared in his life unannounced, even though he thought he had grown accustomed to her, every time he saw her when he woke up he could not help but be amazed. Sitting by the window frame and holding a book with the cover of a big full moon in her hands, a beautiful woman was looking at him with her enchanting ruby eyes and a small smile. Bathed in the rays of dawn, her body that was as elegant as the sculpture of a goddess, her skin as delicate and white as porcelain seemed to glow as if small diamonds were covering her completely. She seemed to have stepped out of a work of art as her beauty had broken all parameters. Good morning. Bai Zeman replied before straightening up completely and smiling back at her. It had been fourteen days two weeks, half a month since he and she had met. However, even though their strength was as great as the distance between heaven and hell, a lower existence and a higher existence were comfortable with each other as if they had known for several lifetimes ago. End of Volume 1 Bai Zeman approached the window and looked outside. A look of relief flashed in his eyes momentarily before he inadvertently sighed. It's finally over. The crimson flames were flames that came from a third-order skill. While they did not have the power of a third-order skill since they were only remnant flames, they definitely could not be considered normal flames by any means. Back then, when Bai Zeman launched the blood trident enveloped by crimson flames and empowered by a hurricane of wind, the flames surrounded the mutated forest slowly while the gasoline and flammable oil had greatly helped to increase the power of the fire. Therefore, even after more than two days had passed, 
the forest still continued to burn fiercely and during the night the crimson blaze could be seen glowing in the sky while the constant crackling sound of the flames could be heard even from the distance. Because the wildfire was still there, the group of over 400 survivors had no way of leaving the university. While it was true that they could have circled the site using the areas that had already burned completely, that would be risky as the tires of the buses would ignite when they came into contact with the still hot ground due to the high temperatures. However, apparently it had all ended sometime during the night or just before Bai Zeman woke up. Time to enter the real stage, little Zeman. Lilith stood up and gently closed the book in her hands as she looked at him with glittering eyes. Bai Zeman nodded with a grave expression and walked toward the door as he replied, It's time. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. The initial floor of the library. It was a little after seven in the morning and the survivors had just finished their breakfasts. Some of them had satisfied smiles, others appeared to be semi-satisfied and often looked at the supplies hungrily, while others looked at the remaining small grains of white rice with discomfort. After eating only rice for so long, many were naturally dissatisfied. However, these were those who were unwilling to work to earn the right to receive better food. Moreover, no one dared to utter a single complaint as their somewhat frightened eyes occasionally glanced to the front where that black-haired demon who killed without batting an eyelash stood. None wanted to die now that the hope of being embraced by the government was just around the corner. A few even believed that the heinous acts committed by Bai Zeman and Shang Guan Bing Shui when they killed people would be punished by law. Suddenly, everyone's attention was attracted by Chen He, who was walking towards the stairs before stopping to look down with a straight expression. The voices and murmurs stopped immediately as everyone's eyes focused on him, waiting for the new announcement. As people without any power, the right to speak they had was practically nil, and even if they spoke at the cost of risking being expelled it was likely that no one would listen as had happened in the past. Therefore, they could only listen and obey. After a few seconds of silence, Chen He began to speak slowly, as everyone probably already knows, the mutated forest beasts were eradicated by us, and the forest was set on fire by Bai Zemin's skill. After three days of constant burning, the mana of the mutated forest was finally consumed by the flames and all signs of mutation were turned to ashes during the last night. The expressions on the faces of the survivors froze before the murmuring began. The mutation was turned to ashes. That means the way is clear. We can finally get out of this damn place. Surprise and joy as well as hope. These were the emotions that could be felt in the voices of all those who began to murmur helplessly. Most of them had worked hard for the past three days so the flesh of the mutated first order animals had been properly cared for, leaving only the flesh of the blazing beetle that had been corroded by the acid of the five Jiaolao snakes untouched. Therefore, they were somewhat exhausted and the good news was certainly a good way to regain energy even if it was only momentary. With a smile that delighted dozens of female students and even female teachers, Chen He announced, Start boarding the buses in an orderly manner. We are leaving the university. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Ten buses marched in a straight line down the ash-strewn road, carefully circling the areas that were still hot and moving through safe zones. Although the buses moved slowly, the sound of the engines was especially loud. Still, no zombies appeared in the vicinity nor could any animal or mutated creature be seen charging to attack. Five buses were being used to move the more than 400 survivors while the other five were being used to move supplies. While the survivors were a little cramped, temporarily there was no other option so they had to hold on, still, no one was unhappy as this was a normal occurrence in the past. On the roof of four of the five buses carrying supplies were four beasts over 20 meters long being loaded as their long tails dragged along the ground. These four creatures were the Jiaolao snakes that had not yet been cared for due to the lack of working tools. Their tough scales were simply too resistant and although Bai Zeman could tear them off one by one with his Xian Yuan sword it would take him days if not a week to finish them off completely. It was precisely for that reason that he did not work on the body of the beasts. That was the job of those who did not fight, not his. The most important thing for him was to level up and absorb the soul power of those who were stronger. 
After approximately 20 to 30 minutes of driving at slowly embarrassing speeds to prevent tire problems, the goal was in sight. The exit. Inside one of the buses at the front, Wu Yujun exclaimed joyfully as she covered her mouth with both hands. It wasn't just her, everyone was excited even if they restrained themselves from shouting out loud. Even Shang Guanbing Shui sighed lightly as if she was unconsciously relieving herself of a heavy weight that was weighing on her shoulders. While the outside world could be dangerous, with hundreds of thousands and millions of zombies as well as countless mutated creatures running rampant, the university was a place where bad memories of the beginning of the end and to which if possible no one wanted to return. Today, two weeks after the apocalypse hit this world following the arrival of an unknown entity called Soul Record on Earth, they had finally managed to overcome the first major obstacle and had entered the real world stage on which they could shine, or perish. Sitting in one of the front seats of the first bus, Bai Zeman couldn't help but let a small smile rose on his face as he thought in his loved ones. Although nothing was certain, hope was something that could not be lost no matter what. For without hope he would have no reason to strive and continue to move forward. When the ten buses left the university grounds for the first time in half a month, the students and teachers could not believe what they were seeing even though the reality was right in front of their eyes. The main streets that had previously been crowded to the point where it looked like a shopping mall even at night were devoid of any sign of human life. The automobiles that previously roared with their engines constantly running were there, but their engines no longer roared and their wheels no longer rolled. Dozens of cars had crashed into buildings, houses, lamp posts, traffic lights. The number of cars that had hit other cars in sight was at least 20. The whole street was a total mess with broken glass, plastic, fiberglass, and some houses knocked down by larger vehicles. Only as far as the survivors' eyes could see, they could already see dried blood stains everywhere as well as several hundred corpses strewn along the street and on the sidewalk in a careless manner. Some had been run over by a car when the chaos erupted while others had been eaten by zombies or some other monster as bestial bites and torn limbs could be seen on many of them. All the excitement they felt a few minutes earlier after finally leaving the university grounds disappeared and the survivors' eyes were filled with apprehension and fear at such an apocalyptic view. Who never dreamed about an apocalypse? Believing that you would survive just fine with great ideas in mind. However, imagination was one thing and reality was something else completely different. Fear in the face of real death devoured all rationality and when danger really loomed all that courage which many believed they had in the past would pop like a soap bubble. Sitting in the first bus leading the departure of the small caravan of ten, Bai Zeman also observed everything with an indifferent expression that did not reveal any of his inner thoughts. However, soon after he had no choice but to move. Blood will activated. Current status, 7.4% 50%. Stop the bus and turn off the engine. Bai Zeman approached the male student driver and tapped him lightly on the shoulder as he pointed to the edge of the road to signal him to stop. Oh okay. The student driving the bus Bai Zeman was riding and nodded, coming out of his dazed state after the horrifying sight of the outside world, and hurriedly lined the vehicle upon the road carefully. Seeing the main bus edging to the side of the road, the other nine drivers did not know what was happening but followed the example of the first one and began to edge as well since the other leaders who were distributed among the buses did not object either. Shang Guanbing Shui, Chen He, Liang Peng, Wu Yujun, Fu Suifeng, Cai Jing Ai, Kong Lan, and Zhong De got off the buses they were riding on just in time to see Bai Zeman slowly descending from the bus he was riding on with his sword firmly gripped in his right hand. When the nine of them gathered and even before anyone asked a question to understand what was going on, zombies began to appear everywhere. From a flower shop whose glass door had broken, from a house with a smashed wooden door, from the edge of the opposite street, crawling out from underneath cars and tearing part of their bodies apart, turning around the corner, etc. No matter which way one looked, the zombies began to approach the buses slowly from the sides, from the front, and from the back. Although those inside the buses were terrified at the grotesque view of the corpses that no longer even looked human after half a month of decomposition, everyone's attention was fixed on the nine people who remained calm with indifferent expressions. 
Bai Zeman looked forward and then turned his face slightly to look behind him over his shoulder as he secretly thought that his blood will skill also functioned as an alert since when an enemy came within a certain range he was immediately warned. I need to study this skill a bit more. Bai Zeman thought before looking at the people beside him and proposing, there are a little over 70 zombies. How about we compete to see who can kill the most? Let's make this our last battle as a team before we go our separate paths. Chen He chuckled before patting Liang Peng's back and nodding, I agree with Bai Zeman. If we're going to say goodbye, let's do it willingly then. Shang Guan Bing Shui also nodded in agreement. Although she did not like Liang Peng too much due to his lustful nature, she did not hate him either, and having fought together for so long and repeatedly it was inevitable that in that discontent there was at least a hint of goodwill towards him. Fu Suifeng and the other four looked at each other before tactically retreating, leaving only the four main leaders shoulder to shoulder. The five of them had differences with each other and there had been several times when they had come close to fist fighting. However, since day one they had been giving it their all, sharing the same fate in that if one died the others would probably fall as well. If they think I'm still that slow turtle from the past then you all are wrong. Liang Peng laughed loudly before stepping forward. Bang! The concrete floor cracked noisily and with a boom, Liang Peng had crossed several meters away in just a second. Bai Zeman laughed and pointed out, well, after acquiring the soul power of some mutated first order beasts it's only natural that you're not so slow anymore. Bang! 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 As if by prior agreement, the three of them dashed forward and in different directions before starting to hunt zombies. Less than a hundred zombies weren't too much and any one of the four was capable of killing them all in a short time. However, as if by prior agreement, the four slowed down the killing speed as if they wanted the battle to drag on a little longer. However, for better or worse, all things had to come to an end so that something new could begin. Since they had decided to separate, then they had to separate. This was something they had all known three days ago. They had met two weeks ago, and two weeks later they separated again. Be careful and don't get into trouble with that personality of yours. Bai Zeman gently tapped the burly shoulder and smiled friendly. Brat, you really are something. Liang Peng shook his head, remembering that moment when he almost fought with the young man in front of him. It was a pleasure to have fought alongside you. Chen He stepped forward and stretched out his hand, taking Liang Peng's hand and shaking it tightly as a sign of goodbye. Chen He and Liang Peng had fought shoulder to shoulder from the first moment the apocalypse broke out, so from a certain point of view, they were the closest. Same here, pretty boy. Liang Peng chuckled before remarking in a playful tone, By the way, I honestly think you should forget about that ice girl and find yourself a hot girl. Don't you think it's better? Chen He blushed in embarrassment and kicked him, go to hell man. Liang Peng laughed loudly before looking at the indifferent Shang Guan Bing Shui, who didn't seem to have any kind of reaction to his previous words. She nodded slightly and said nothing more. That was her farewell greeting. Well, I guess that's already good coming from you. Liang Peng shook his head and said without knowing whether to laugh or cry, if you had said some nice words to me I would have thought you were actually secretly cursing me. Without another word, Liang Peng turned around and walked back to the bus he had gotten off, which also had 70 to 80 survivors inside. Three days ago, when the group learned that they would not all be going the same way, Bai Zian and the rest made an announcement that some would be traveling south while others would be going north. The survivors with family in the northern part of Rulin City quickly stood up and expressed that they wanted to follow Liang Peng in order to find their families, which amounted to just under a hundred. As to whether their families were alive or not, that was unknown but hopes were not particularly high. In addition to the bus with survivors, a second bus loaded with supplies such as meat, mutated beast meat, rice grains, noodles, pure water and some small luxuries such as milk, also started its engines. As one of the main leaders who had been fighting constantly since day one and who had obtained a large amount of supplies, 
Liang Peng naturally had the right to take a considerable share and Bai Zimin was not so cruel to take everything from a person with whom he had fought shoulder to shoulder. Soon, the two buses departed with one behind and one in front, slowly moving away in a northerly direction. As the two buses disappeared from his line of sight, Bai Zimin announced, We should start moving too. We have a lot of work to do yet. The rest agreed and quickly all boarded their respective buses, except Chen He, who stood for a few more seconds looking off into the distance before departing as well. Soon, the engines of the eight buses started up and the now smaller caravan began to move in the opposite direction from where the previous two buses had left, directly moving south of Rulin City. As to whether the bus leaders would ever meet again, that was still unknown. In this new world, it was difficult to know if people would have the opportunity to meet again someday. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. The streets near the university were a total mess, with crashed cars and collapsed light poles along with various building debris. Therefore, even after riding for half an hour, the buses had not made much progress. On several occasions, the group had to stop the engines to move obstacles out of the way such as moving cars off the road. As for this, Bai Zeman also made sure to have a group of survivors get off the buses under the protection of Fu Suifeng and the rest before starting to empty the gas tanks, thus filling bottles and gallons of fuel. At present, with work at a complete standstill, fuel was as valuable a commodity as the food. One drop less of fuel meant that there was one drop that could not be recovered in any way, and while it was already a non-renewable energy, this had worsened by thousands of levels with the coming of the end of the world. After traveling approximately 50 kilometers south, the eight buses stopped at the roadside, right in front of four convenience stores and a large trucking company. Cai Jing Ai Ai, Kong Lan, take a group of people to collect anything you find useful or that may be useful in the future inside the convenience stores. Bai Zimin ordered before telling Fu Suifeng and Zhongda to stay outside guarding the survivors and guarding the buses. The two women nodded and quickly went to delegate the job. On the other hand, Bai Zimin in the company of Shang Guan Bing Shui, Chen He, and Wu Yujun, went into the trucking firm to look for as large a cargo truck as possible that would suit this new world. The buses were good for transporting people, but they were definitely not good for carrying supplies. Besides, the snakes hanging from the roof were too conspicuous and could attract unwanted attention or trouble that could easily be avoided. The group searched for about half an hour as the place was really big, with all kinds of trucks, tanker trucks, small cargo trucks, ladder trucks, etc. Occasionally groups of zombies dressed in blue with hats and name tags on their chests would appear, indicating that when the soul record arrived on Earth, these people were at work and could not withstand the wave of mana entering their bodies, turning them into mindless mutations that only knew how to wander everywhere. Even before these zombies could get too close, Chen He did a great job with his crossbow, killing almost all of them. The reason he left some alive was because they all wanted the beautiful and seductive Wu Yujun to level up so she could become more powerful and use her skill properly, becoming a great asset to the group as a whole. Gradually she killed and killed zombies, slowly increasing her level. Over the past three days, Shang Guan Bing Shui had taken her hunting around the university, which helped her raise her level to eight. Although she was still weak, she was many times more powerful than in the past and with a little effort and time she could catch up, or at the very least, strong enough to not be a burden, as she referred to herself. This one will do. Bai Zeman nodded in satisfaction as he arrived in front of a huge cargo truck with a giant box in the back. Not only was the box firmly closed by two large doors, but the front had a powerful bumper capable of withstanding the constant impact of zombies that came across the road. Although some changes had to be made and modified so that it could circulate like the buses, temporarily this Dong Fang truck was the best there was in this place. While they were at it, a gunshot sound suddenly rang out from outside and everyone's face abruptly changed. Bang! Damn it! Bai Zeman cursed and rushed towards the exit like a whirlwind. Clearly, something was going on. If one of the people he was nurturing died when they were not yet fully grown it would be a great loss to him. Especially Kong Lan. 
Her lesser healing skill was something that Bai Zeman needed because even though he was strong, in a battle to the death he knew perfectly well that injuries would be inevitable. Shang Guan Bing Shui and the rest quickly followed from behind. On the third floor of a bungalow, a group of more than fifteen people was gathered in silence. Some of them were simply sitting down, others were leaning against the wall, and two of them were crouched by the window with binoculars looking off into the distance. What was most surprising was that although the group clearly had no special training, there were five of them carrying Type 54 pistols with 15 rounds of ammunition each. As for the rest, some had bats, steel pipes, watermelon cutting knives, machetes, and other melee weapons. It's been almost 15 minutes but those guys who went in haven't come out. A bearded, burly man pointed out without taking his eyes off the group of survivors working. The other man next to him turned the binoculars to the buses and said with a tinge of alarm, Still, this group is definitely not simple. Those scary-looking snakes were hunted by them and the buses were modified with a material I can't recognize from here. The bearded man snorted and licked his lips before chuckling, they may not be simple. But can they survive a bullet? Remember, Boss Yang came with us this time. Besides, I haven't touched a beauty for over a week and I'm already getting a little impatient. Aren't you the same, Luo Cheng? Luo Cheng hesitated but in the end, remained silent. In fact, it had been a while since he felt the warmth of a woman and all the women in the group who were at the base were not too pretty if compared to the young female students with lithe bodies in the group of survivors a few streets away. As for the prettier ones, they all belonged to the leaders of the group so little punks like them would never stand a chance with them unless they were willing to die the next second. Suddenly the door opened and a young man of about 24 years old who dressed like a hooligan entered the room, silencing everyone inside for a moment before they all stood up. Boss Yang. Boss Yang. M. Yang Pei casually nodded as he casually chewed on a piece of gum before walking over to the window and roughly grabbing one of the binoculars. The bearded man, Zhang Hu, dared not show the slightest displeasure and stood silently as he looked at Yang Pei watching in the distance. After a minute or two, Yang Pei threw the binoculars at the burly man and said with a smile that was not a smile, I just saw some little beauties over there. After taking the ones I like and leaving others for the other bosses, you guys can have fun. The small group perked up immediately and everyone's eyes sparkled. Even if the other group had over 300 people, they hadn't seen any firearms with them so they weren't worried. A single Type 54 pistol was enough to dissuade dozens of people and five of them were certainly enough to dissuade a few hundred. In addition, the other group was composed of people who had not seen cruelty, this was obvious since they all had bright faces and none seemed to have been through hardship. Such a group filled with hothouse flowers could never stand against the terror of a storm. Remember, shoot as few as possible so as not to waste ammunition. We didn't bring so many bullets or weapons for this mission since we were only supposed to take supplies from these four convenience stores. Yang Pei barked before walking towards the exit and saying, If anyone moves, goes wild, or doesn't obey, just kill them to warn the others that we're not playing around. The fifteen or so men had a glint of madness in their eyes and quickly followed Yang Pei before boarding some 4x4 pickup trucks and off-road jeeps. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. While Bai Zeman and the rest were clearing the hazards inside the truck company blocking the road and looking for a new transport needed for the group, Cai Jing Ai Ai and Kong Lan were looking after the survivors who were working hard to move as many supplies as possible towards the entrance. Even the small cigarette packs were not spared and were moved as well. Across the street, Fu Suifeng and Zhong De were checking on the survivors who had not been chosen to work this time or who simply continued to maintain their non-working attitude. To avoid major problems, they simply forbade them to get off the buses and made them wait in their seats with order. Little by little, cardboard boxes filled to the brim with packages of noodles, rice, bottles of water, salt, sugar, milk, candy, cookies and many other foods began to pile up one by one next to the four convenience stores. While it might seem like a lot at first glance, the reality was that considering the sheer number of people all the food they were taking out of the stores could last at most a month before it was completely depleted. After all, 
properly feeding nearly 400 people was not a simple task to scoff at. Jing Ai Ai, how strong do you think Bai Zeman really is? Kong Lan asked to the girl next to her. Through her glasses, her dark eyes seemed to glint with intelligence as she carefully observed the surroundings. Cai Jing Ai Ai thought for a moment before shaking her head, I don't know. Even though I've been adding every point in agility and stamina each time I level up, I can't catch up to his agility. Even though I have my dagger that increases my agility greatly when he fully bursts I can barely see his shadow flashing. The two girls had become close to each other after deciding to follow in Bai Zeman's footsteps. When they were still in university, they often went out to hunt zombies and some other creatures to level up and improve their strength, creating a strong bond of companionship between them. Suddenly, the sound of several engines roaring from a distance and rapidly approaching alerted everyone. Zhongda's face changed slightly and he hurriedly shouted, Kong Lan, C.A.I. Jing I. I. Have the workers hide inside the stores and don't come out. Kong Lan's face also changed and she ordered, Everyone, inside and don't come out until told to do otherwise. In the past, she was shy like a turtle that dared not stick its head out of its shell. She was always alone, lost in her own books. However, after half a month of killing hundreds and hundreds of zombies as well as other mutated animals, Kong Lan had gained more self-confidence and her words no longer faltered in moments of gravity. She was a smart woman and even though they had not yet encountered any more survivors, the case of Jiao Long was still fresh in her memory. No, not only her, everyone remembered it clearly and knew that sometimes, humans were the worst enemy. Survivors who were moving boxes of food and other supplies turned pale at the sound of the order and the approaching engines. Without hesitation, they all ran into the stores and hid while looking out with terror-filled eyes. The apprehension that Zhongda and Kong Lan felt and that soon spread to the rest of the survivors proved to have a valid reason after all. Four 4x4 pickup trucks followed by two modified jeeps raced by at full speed before noisily braking, stopping in front and at the rear, blocking the bus's path to impede their escape. Immediately after, 15 men with all kinds of weapons descended from the vehicles and surrounded the eight buses. Several of them had hair dyed yellow, green, blue and other bright colors while others were wild-looking middle-aged men. At the sight of the 15 new arrivals who clearly had no good intentions, the survivors inside the buses and convenience stores became frightened. None of them dared to make the slightest sound for fear of attracting too much attention and looked at C.A.I. Jing I. I. and the rest with hope, they were what the survivors could rely on at the moment. Everyone. Get off the damn buses. A fat man with several acne marks on his face approached one of the buses and shouted loudly as he swung his bat at the shell of the blazing beetle that protected most of the vehicle. Seven other men approached the other buses and began viciously beating the vehicles with the weapons in their hands as they bellowed and cursed, terrifying the survivors even more. Jean de frowned and was about to step forward but the burly man pointed the bozel of his gun, forcing him to stop immediately. I'd advise you not to play the hero here, big guy. The burly man named Naihu sneered. I know several of you are strong enough to be able to hunt these monsters here and we probably won't be your opponents. However, I don't think you can dodge a bullet, can you? Even if the people in this group had the strength to hunt those terrifying snakes, they were still human. A bullet was enough to end the life of any of them or injure them, at the very least, a gun was enough to keep them at bay. This was what everyone thought and in fact, it was not wrong. Although Zhongda and the rest were much stronger than a normal human, a shot in the head meant the end of the game. Even Bai Zeman would die if he was shot in the head or heart. With Zhong de forced to stop, another armed man approached C.A.I. Jing I. I. and Kong Lan. The man looked at both women with obvious obscene desire in his eyes and licked his lips as he said with a hint of regret, Too bad I won't be able to play with any of you, little beauties. At least not until the bosses get bored of your bodies he he. The gunman stretched a hand forward with the intention of grabbing Kong Lan's chest while two other gunmen watched the scene with amusement, pointing their guns at the two girls as if to intimidate them with their presence. Kong Lan's face changed as she did not expect these people to be so brazen and bold. She took a step back, 
evading the man's grip before pointing her index finger at him, Don't touch me, you filthy pig. Before the man could react, a magic circle appeared on the tip of Kong Lan's finger and a dark green cloud completely enveloped him and one of his colleagues. The green cloud only lasted a second before it vanished completely. However, the two men who were previously standing with smiles on their faces were now lying on the ground on their backs. Their previously smiling and confident faces were now filled with disbelief and the color of their skin had a strange-looking greenish tint on it, giving them a terrible appearance. The man who, fortunately for him, was a meter or two behind and managed to escape the range of Kong Lan's magical skill, turned as pale as a sheet, and raised his gun, bitch. Seeing this, Cai Jing I immediately lunged forward and pushed Kong Lan to the ground. Only a split second later, there was an explosion that echoed everywhere. The survivors inside the bus screamed in fright and Kong Lan's face turned pale with fear as if it wasn't for Cai Jing I I's quick reaction she might have died. Ugh. Cai Jing I I frowned and looked at her left arm with pain in her eyes. Although she had managed to avoid a fatal injury and had saved Kong Lan, the bullet still impacted against her left arm and pierced it from side to side. The gunman took aim again, preparing to fire. However, to his utter disbelief, he felt a sharp pain in his chest that forced him to stop his movements. There, he saw a weak-looking hand holding a knife, stabbing right into his heart. With wide eyes filled with panic, the gunman raised his head and saw that, at some unnoticed moment, a young man with glasses as thin as a matchstick had appeared. A second later, the life disappeared from the man's eyes and he fell heavily backward. Of course, this person was precisely Fu Suifeng, who had hidden with his level 5 stealth skill as soon as he noticed trouble. Fu Suifeng took a deep breath and looked at his first human kill with complicated eyes. Although he knew it would end up happening since he decided to follow Bai Zeman, it felt strange to know that his once innocent hands now carried the life of a person and his own soul power contained the soul power of another human being. The events happened in a matter of seconds and the other men couldn't even react when three of them had already died at enemy hands. Little bastards! The burly man, Nai Hu, who was aiming at Zhong Dei, shouted to shake off the fear he felt and took aim with his gun, before firing two shots in a row. However, Naihu was so scared that both shots missed miserably. Before a third shot could be fired, Zhongda activated his power boost skill and rushed forward. Go to hell! Bang! With a strong punch charged with over 50 strength points, Naihu's head popped into meat paste and his body hit the ground noisily. In less than five seconds, four of the five gunmen were dead at the hands of a group of four students who two weeks ago would not even have had the courage to resist a single Type 54 pistol. Just when they thought they had the upper hand and were about to begin a counterattack, a lazy, arrogant voice sounded from inside one of the pickup trucks. Really crap. Four loaded guns and they can't control a couple of kids? They better be dead or this old man would shove a stick up their asses until they scream like mules. Yang Pei, with pierced ears and dyed red hair, walked lazily and looked at the guns on the ground. As long as the weapons were there, the death of the gunman was no problem. At the base there were dozens if not hundreds of people willing to fight if given a weapon. Little beauty, you sure are dangerous. Yang Pei looked at Kong Lan, ignoring the rest, and scanned her body up and down as he said, How about you become my woman? Not only will I respect you, but you will also have the right to participate in important decisions with your strength. Without waiting for a reply, he looked at Cai Jing I I and nodded, You seem to be quite quick and your reaction is good. You can also be mine. Are you retarded? Zhong de barked tired of so much nonsense and abruptly rushed forward with the intention of putting an end to the whole charade. The ground beneath his feet cracked slightly due to his explosive power and taking advantage of the strength on his feet his speed exploded for a moment. Yang Pei snorted and quickly stepped back while muttering some strange words. A second later, two magic rings appeared on the ground in front of him, and in a flash of light two creatures came out. One was a wild-looking brown bear that was over two meters tall even on its four legs. Its eyes were blood-red and its front paws looked especially formidable, 
as if it could crush a rock with one swipe. The other was a white wolf whose fur was as pure as snow except that its nose was spotted with black. Its eyes were blood red like the bear's and its teeth were as sharp as razor blades giving the illusion of being able to cut through any defense. When Zhongda saw the two beasts he was surprised, but because he was in the middle of a charge had no way to stop. Therefore he exploded with more strength and punched fiercely forward with both fists. The brown bear roared ferociously and stood up on its hind legs before dropping down with all its weight. Boom! When Zhongda's two fists connected with the brown bear's two front paws there was a small explosion before the winner of the clash was decided. Although Zhongda had already reached level 16 and his strength was incomparable to the past, he was still slightly below Yang Pei's summoning. He was forced to retreat five steps back before he finally regained his balance and looked at the brown bear in surprise. However, the brown bear did not give him too much time to think as it immediately charged forward and attacked again. Damn it! Zhong de gritted his teeth and began to fight against the brown bear, engaging in a fierce melee using his fists and legs to attack. Swoosh! Suddenly, the air behind Yang Pei shook slightly and Fu Suifeng appeared with his knife still stained with blood. Now that he had already killed once and given the circumstances he didn't mind adding one more kill to the count. However, the wolf suddenly howled and looked in his direction as its nose twitched before lunging at a speed that rivaled his own. If Fu Suifeng continued his attack then the wolf would be able to injure him and while it was true that Yang Pei was the prime mover, which meant that his death marked the vanishing of the summons, Fu Suifeng had no real combat experience and the fear of pain and death was still present. With no other choice, he stopped his attack and quickly began to fight with the summoned wolf. Both were fast, blinking constantly, and trying to take the advantage. However, Fu Suifeng was just a notch faster, which allowed him not to lose against the savage beastliness of the white wolf. Before Yang Pei could say anything, Cai Jing Ai Ai gritted her teeth and ignored the pain in her bleeding arm. With her agarth dagger firmly gripped in her right hand, she appeared in front of him in just two seconds and stabbed mercilessly into his heart. She obviously intended to end her enemy's life and had not even hesitated for a second before doing so. Yang Pei's face turned ugly as he did not expect this group of people to be so powerful that they could resist his summoning for so long. Although his summons were strong, Mana's consumption was terrifying. He could only sustain both beasts for a couple of minutes at most before losing his mana completely. You really don't leave me any more options little bitches. Yang Pei pulled out a Type 54 pistol from his waist and aimed it at Kong Lan. Although he wanted to keep her to himself, he had no choice but to kill her for him to survive. It wasn't like it was the first time he had done something like killing women anyway. Cai Jing Ai Ai's face changed and quickly turned around, wanting to rescue Kong Lan once again. However, although her agility was high, she didn't have time to get there. Bang! The sound of the gunshot thundered out and Cai Jing Ai Ai turned pale as if she had seen a ghost in broad daylight. She knew that in terms of value, Kong Lan was the most important to Bai Zeman since she had the ability to heal, if something happened to her, who knew how he would react when he returned. However, what happened was even more surprising. Right in front of Kong Lan, who was also as pale as a sheet, a wall of ice rose up. The low-caliber bullet hit the wall and left a small white mark without being able to do anything else before falling to the ground with a clink. Lucky. Kong Lan muttered before sitting down on the ground in fright. She could no longer stand upright. Cai Jing Ai Ai also sighed in relief and unconsciously relaxed, which caused the pain in her left arm to increase several notches. Yang Pei's face changed completely when he saw the ice wall and realized that the gunshots surely alerted the people who were still inside. He had thought that the people outside were the real deal, but when he saw how hard the ice wall was he was terrified to discover that he might have made a mistake. Hastily he ordered his summons to return to protect him. However, how could Zhong De and Fu Sufeng let him do whatever he wanted? Now you are really dead you son of a bitch. Zhongda shouted as he forced the brown bear to stay in place, not letting it go to help its master. Fu Suifeng did the same to the white wolf, 
suffering a few scratches in the process but firmly enduring. While Zhongda was fighting the brown bear, suddenly a magic circle appeared on the ground and an earthen spike rose up. The tip of the spike pierced the bear's body and lifted it into the air two meters above the ground before the beast let out a roar of pain and disappeared as if it had never been there. On the other hand, the wind whistled and two mana arrows struck the white wolf that was entangled with Fu Suifeng. The wolf howled in pain and just like the brown bear's body, it burst like an air balloon and disappeared from this world. The two summons were connected to Yang Pei himself, so after being killed he also suffered a hard backlash and ended up coughing out two mouthfuls of fresh blood. Yang Pei staggered slightly and his face turned pale due to the aftershock of his skill. His first order summoning skill level 2 was powerful, powerful enough to allow him to take on several evolved ones at the same time. This was obvious from how he alone was able to fight the group of three. Summoning allowed him to currently summon up to two creatures that had the same level as him, consuming one mana points per summon every five seconds. Therefore, it was a skill that Yang Pei could not keep active for a long time, one or two minutes at most, but this time was enough for him to slaughter most of his enemies, as he had done until today. However, his skill was a double-edged sword as when one of his summons was completely overwhelmed he received the remaining damage as a consequence, just as had just happened. Yang Pei saw two women and a man with a crossbow approaching from inside the facility. Although the women were incredibly beautiful, Yang Pei was not in the mood to joke around like before. But to his utter terror, a voice rang out from just behind him. Jing Ai Ai, are you okay? As he hurriedly turned around, was startled to see that at some point he didn't notice, a young man in his early twenties had appeared a few meters away. I I am fine. Thank you. Cai Jing I I nodded and accepted Bai Zemin's help to sit comfortably on one of the bus steps. Although there were still ten or eleven hooligans surrounding the buses, they only had bladed weapons and had no power to do anything. Even though some of them had evolved they were only level 2 or 3 at most and without any striking ability, so in the previous battle, they could only watch from the side. When Bai Zeman approached with Cai Jing Ai Ai, they all stepped back with a pale faces and did not dare to say anything. After all, not only was the current situation extremely unfavorable, but the young man in front of them had appeared out of nowhere as if he was a ghost. Bai Zeman ignored everyone around him and gently stroked the shy Cai Jing Ai Ai's hair and praised, You did a great job. Although he had not seen the unfolding of events, he was smart enough to judge that the girl beside him had been injured to protect someone weaker, considering that the survivors were covered and Zhongda was fighting the bear, only Kong Lan remained. After all, Kong Lan had focused 100% on the path of magic unlike Shang Guanbing Shui who could use her eye skill to fight in different ways. Kong Lan timidly approached and lowered her head in embarrassment, Jing Ai Ai, I'm sorry. Because of me you. Cai Jing Ai Ai smiled sweetly ignoring the pain, and shook her head gently, it's okay. An arm wound is nothing compared to the death of a friend. Besides, the bullet went in and out so it's no big deal. Bai Zeman couldn't help but pat the shy but brave girl on the head. Kong Lan, heal Jing Ai Ai with your skill. Kong Lan didn't even hesitate and immediately cast her skill twice on Cai Jing Ai Ai's injury, just that this time her face didn't turn pale like in the past, after all, the current Kong Lan had already reached level 15. The blood immediately stopped flowing and the tissues began to regenerate at frightening speeds. Although the wound was still there as well as the pain, two or three days would once again leave the skin on her arm as perfect as it always was. Bai Zeman turned around and looked coldly at Yang Pei before he began to walk step by step in his direction without saying a word. To him, his subordinates were valuable to the extent that he was nurturing them with treasures and skills. However, in a matter of minutes, they were all close to being killed. While it was good for them to experience life and death battles like this to gain experience, if just one of them was killed it would be a great loss for Bai Zeman. Especially Kong Lan, even now he had not seen a second person obtain a healing skill like her and with such high magic and mana stats compared to a normal person. Although Bai Zeman did not speak and only walked, 
Yang Pei could feel as if a wild beast was watching him and immediately raised his gun to shoot. This was because his summoning skill could not be activated again until 10 minutes after the summonings were killed. However, before he could pull the trigger, the wind whistled and the gun in his hands was sent flying by an arrow. When Yang Pei stepped back in fright, he saw the young man with the crossbow looking at him indifferently. Just as the young punk was about to look forward again, a hand shot out at full speed and grabbed him by the throat before slowly lifting him off the ground. Be bastard. He barely managed to mutter those words between his teeth as he struggled with all his strength. Yang Pei's fists and kicks landed hard on Bai Zemin's body, making small bangs. However, to the young punk's terror, none of his blows caused his enemy's expression to change in any way, let alone being able to break free from his grip. Suddenly, Bai Zemin kicked twice without warning, and the sound of bones breaking echoed everywhere followed by a painful choked scream. Thud. Yang Pei's body was casually thrown to the ground and the young punk writhed in pain as he howled at the sight of his legs twisted at an impossible angle. Don't worry, I will soon continue to entertain you. Bai Zemin spoke for the first time before punching and knocking him out easily. Without his summoning skill, Yang Pei was simply crap in front of Bai Zemin. In fact, even with his skill, the difference would not be noticeable due to the difference in power between the two sides. Bai Zemin looked at the approximately 11 gang members with bladed weapons and picked up the Type 54 pistol that previously belonged to Yang Pei. Everyone on your knees, now. He ordered in a deep voice as he pointed the gun forward. Kong Lan, Fu Suifeng, Zhong Dei, and even Cai Jing Ai had picked up the other four guns and aimed at the enemies coldly. The four of them had already killed humans and had witnessed how if not for timely help they might all be dead, this convinced them even more that what they were doing was the right thing to do. Being pointed at by guns, the eleven gang members had no choice but to kneel obediently, waiting to see what kind of treatment they would receive. Bai Zeman looked at a middle-aged man with a shaved head and asked coldly, Who are you? Why did you target us? Where did you come from? Pei. Do you want me to talk and rat on the others? Forget you little bitch. The middle-aged man spat on the ground and looked at him defiantly. Wu Yujin could not help but look at the middle-aged man who had just pronounced those words with a hint of sympathy. It wasn't just her, practically every survivor present knew that Bai Zeman was by no means a saint. Bai Zeman looked at the phlegm on the ground for a second before looking the bald man straight in the eye. How honorable of you! He didn't even hesitate and with a bang the head of the militant exploded. Pieces of broken skull along with chunks of flesh and blood flew across the ground, causing the timid survivors to let out groans of terror as they looked at the scene from the buses and from inside the convenience stores. Chen he could not help but frown. Even now he could not completely agree with Bai Zemin's methods as he had a strong sense of justice from the way he was raised since childhood. However, although he was relatively fair, he was neither pedantic nor stupid. Since before the apocalypse he already knew that society was rotten. There were even cases in which he knew about politicians, policemen, or military officers who, as long as it did not cross a certain threshold, were willing to carry out certain assignments or orders that went against the established rules. Seeing the militant's death, the rest of the gang was shocked and could not help but look at the young man in front of them in a new light. Although he was only in his early twenties, he hadn't even blinked when he pulled the trigger. Bai Zeman pointed the gun at another militant and asked coldly, Who are you? Why did you point at us? Where do you come from? I will speak. I'll fucking speak. Don't shoot me. Bai Zemin's target this time turned out to be Luo Cheng, who had been monitoring the group from a distance with binoculars. Luo Cheng was already sweating cold bullets seeing the deaths of the other militants so when he felt the gunmetal right above his head he didn't even hesitate and agreed to speak all he knew. He was not a heroic warrior by any means and feared death. The burly man who had been monitoring the group from a distance next to Luo Cheng suddenly shouted loudly, Luo Cheng! None of the bosses have treated you badly but you are going to betray them. Aren't you afraid that they will throw your younger sister to the soldiers to have fun with her? 
Bai Zeman didn't even let him continue saying another word before he changed his aim to the head of that burly man and pulled the trigger. Seeing the death of the burly man who had stood up, the other gang members did not dare to utter the slightest sound for fear of being next and having their heads blown off by a bullet. If any of you want to continue to be loyal and honorable to your good bosses, then come out now. I will give you all the opportunity to continue to be loyal until the last moment and die a death worthy of a brave warrior. None of them dared to stand up or highlight and quickly lowered their heads like timid chickens. There was not even one of them who wanted to be the next target of the Type 54 pistol. Bai Zeman ignored them and pulled Luo Cheng away from the group before putting the barrel of the gun back on Luo Cheng's head, now you can start to speak. If you dare to lie to me, if you dare to hide information, if you dare to give even one wrong name, I will bang your brains out. I have eight others like you here and I don't think all eight of you are willing to die for honor. Luo Cheng nodded quickly as he sweated and began to spill the beans one after another without stopping. Although he was worried about his younger sister's future, he had to survive to protect her first or else nothing would make sense, now that his life was in someone else's hands, he had to adapt to the rules of the other person's game. That was the way the world worked now. Luo Cheng and the rest were part of a gang called Four Big Bosses Camp. At the beginning of the apocalypse, there were too many zombies and chaos had broken out everywhere when people's pets suddenly turned on their owners and started slaughtering them all. Zombies did not fear bullets and did not know the meaning of pain while many evolved animals were even more terrifying as many were impervious to bullets, ferocious beyond belief, and aggressive in nature. Compared to zombies and evolved beasts, normal humans were simply too weak. At that time, Four people suddenly appeared southeast of Rulin City about 50 kilometers from here. These four people were part of a gang in the past but somehow acquired powerful skills and also had some firearms with them, thus saving the lives of many people. These four people were, Ye Qigong, Lei Su, Du Meng, and the currently out of action Yang Pei. At first, the four acted somewhat restrained and although they abused their powers also protected the weak. They cleared a small village of zombies and killed several evolved animals, creating a relatively safe area for the currently over 700 people to get some rest. However, when no police or government support showed up after almost a week, things began to change. The four bosses began to feel the pressure due to the lack of food and in a fit of anger began to abuse several women no matter how much they screamed or cried. The four bosses gathered several men willing to do anything to get some food in their stomachs and raided the local police station, obtaining a small supply of weapons. After arming approximately 50 men, they began to clear the surrounding area, killing zombies and obtaining some supplies in the process. With the firearms and supplies under their control, the other survivors could only obey no matter how cruel the four bosses' orders were. Currently, the village was living under total oppression and there was no hope at all in that place. According to Luo Cheng, the target they were aiming at this time was these four convenience stores and they only came across them by accident. The reason they raided them was not only to steal the supplies but also because there were many young and beautiful women, which could become a great merit if they presented them to the bosses. Yang Pei himself drooled over them. So, you're telling me that for four small convenience stores, one of these four bosses personally moved in. Bai Zeman shook his head and laughed coldly. It's the truth. I swear. I don't know anything else. Luo Cheng was scared and cried out in terror as his body shook non-stop. Bai Zeman looked at him indifferently before saying in a deep voice, Zhong De, Fu Feng. Take two of these guys away and see if you can get some information. If what Luo Cheng was completely true it would soon come out and in case anything didn't match, any of the three who lied would be executed immediately. Fu Feng and Zhong De casually dragged two other militants and took them to separate locations. Although the two hooligans were frightened and tried to resist unconsciously, with the strength of two evolvers they had no way to break free. In fact, the two militants were so scared after seeing the death of their comrades that Fu Feng and Zhong De did not even have to pressure or beat them to make them speak as immediately spilled out all the information they knew. After a conversation lasting several minutes, Bai Zeman and the rest came to the conclusion that none of the three seemed to be lying. 
Although there were slight changes in the words they said for obvious reasons, the core of the information remained the same. Bai Ziman approached the frightened Luo Cheng and threw his Xian Yuan sword to the ground before pointing to another militant, if you want to live then kill him and I will allow you to join us. Luo Cheng's face changed slightly upon hearing his words as he clearly understood what the young man in front of him meant. If he killed a member of his group, then it meant that he was willing to leave the four big bosses camp. After all, it would be impossible for him to return because he would be branded as a traitor immediately since he would not even be able to explain how he alone managed to survive in the face of a calamity but Yang Pei did not. In short, if Luo Cheng killed the militant it really meant that he would be joining Bai Zemin's group completely and without return. In the end, under the terrified eyes of the militant singled out by Bai Zemin, Luo Cheng gritted his teeth and picked up the sword. Before the militant could have a chance to say anything, Luo Cheng mercilessly slashed and decapitated him. Blood flew everywhere and the militant's head rolled on the ground. His eyes were still wide open filled with disbelief and hate. The hidden survivors cried out scared and some of the militants directly peed their pants without being able to control their own bodies. Wu Yujun and Chen He, who still had no blood on their hands, quickly turned around with pale faces. Even Fu Suifeng, Cai Jing Ai Ai, Zhong De, and Kong Lan, who had killed before, could not help but turn slightly pale at the bloody scene. Only Bai Zeman and Shang Guan Bing Shui remained without noticeable changes in their facial expressions. Luo Cheng put the sword on the ground and knelt down before bowing, Luo Cheng is willing to work for you. Just. I just hope you will help me take care of my little sister. She's only nine years old and can't protect herself. Bai Zeman waved his hand and said indifferently, as long as you are honest and don't give me trouble on purpose you will naturally be treated as a subordinate with rights. I will personally take care of protecting your family and if anyone dares to even harm a strand of your little sister's hair I will make that person regret it in hell. Thank you, thank you. Luo Cheng bowed profusely and thanked from the bottom of his heart. Although the fear was lingering and the insecurity towards the future was still there, he had no choice but to believe and wait to see if the young man in front of him would keep his word. The rest of the militants looked at Bai Zeman fearfully before one suddenly stood up slowly, Boss, I, Xiao Min, am willing to work for you. Bai Zeman looked at him before casually pointing to another militant, if you want to follow me then kill him. Xiao Min did not hesitate as he picked up the sword and decapitated his former comrade, bathing in his blood as if he were a demon from hell. In the end, Bai Zeman gained a total of four more subordinates. The rest of the militants were decapitated on the spot and their blood pooled together with their corpses, forming a small pool of blood on the road. The reason why Bai Zeman had no qualms about killing these people was because they were all not good birds. If his group had been on the losing side, all of these men would probably have started beating or killing men while physically abusing female students and teachers. It was also for this reason that Shang Guan Bing Shui did not try to stop him and for the same reason, Chen He did not complain even though he did not agree with his methods. Only those who are willing to die have the right to kill. It was a phrase that Bai Zeman was quite fond of and applied in this case. Since the militants had bad intentions towards them, then they had to bear the consequences for failing. Because he still did not trust the four new recruits, Bai Zeman left them under the care of Fu Suifen and the rest. With guns in their hands and being considerably high level evolved, they would have no problem handling four people even if they wanted to go wild. The survivors continued to empty the convenience stores since work had been interrupted by the arrival of the militants. On the other hand, Chen He looked at the Type 54 pistol in his hands with fondness because although it was not his preferred choice, with that firearm he felt thousand times more comfortable. With Chen He's marksmanship and ability, a small caliber pistol could be even more terrifying than a heavy machine gun in the hands of a novice. As for Bai Zeman, he was currently inside a small bungalow a few streets away. If something happened, with his agility he would be able to arrive on the scene in a matter of seconds to provide support. The reason he moved away was that he needed some privacy for what he was going to do next. Bai Zeman crouched down and looked at the unconscious Yang Pei for a moment. 
he made a deep cut on the chest of the young man who was about the same age as him and seeing that he still did not wake up he threw a handful of salt into the wound. The result was immediate. Yang Pei's eyes opened immediately, as big as two saucers. His face distorted like that of a terrifying monster and a roar of pain broke through his throat, bursting through the walls and going beyond. He looked at Bai Zeman and barked like a wounded beast, you bastard. I'll cut you into a thousand pieces and feed you to the pigs. Two magic circles flashed on the ground and two white wolves came out from inside. The two summoned beasts seemed to be able to sense their master's pain as they howled ferociously and lunged at Bai Zeman with their jaws wide open. You really don't know what's good for you. Bai Zeman coldly snorted and took a step forward before striking out with both fists. When his two fists collided with the two summons, the beasts exploded on the spot without even being able to howl in pain, disappearing from this world completely. Yang Pei spat out two mouthfuls of fresh blood and began to cough ferociously, choking on his own blood amidst the yells of pain that had now turned into almost inaudible grunts. Let's see what you do, little baby. Bai Zeman opened the small pocket on the side of his backpack and carefully pulled out an object. The object that Bai Zeman took out was actually the small mutated plant that he had found about a week ago in the female dormitory after successfully hunting down the first order anti-magic zombie. So far, Bai Zeman was practically 100% sure that this plant was a treasure. However, that small percentage remaining to reach 100% was holding him tightly and he did not dare to eat its fruits. After all, Lilith had already made it clear to him that if it was a harmful mutated plant his body could end up exploding in a mist of blood. Just imagining the scene made his hair stand on end. The small mutated plant was still the size of a palm but there was a big difference in its overall appearance. This was because in the past there had been five small green fruits and two slightly bigger red fruits, now, however, there were four green fruits and three red fruits. During the time of one week, the small mutated plant had been watered by Bai Zeman every day with great care and every time he went to sleep he made sure to leave his backpack near the window at an angle where the moonlight would illuminate it. During the day, he made sure that the little plant received enough sunlight and also checked periodically to make sure that the holes in the plastic bottle were large enough so that there would be no problems. Now the time had come to see if his efforts were worthwhile or if they were in fact a total waste of time. Lilith, do you think I should use a red one or a green one? Bai Zeman looked at the plant unsure so he couldn't help but ask the most important question. W.H. Yang Pei seemed to have forgotten the pain he felt when the most beautiful being he had ever seen in his entire life appeared out of nowhere like a ghost. His eyes widened in surprise and his mouth moved as if he wanted to say something but in the end no words came out from inside it. Lilith didn't even give him a look and directly treated him as if he was even more insignificant than the air that was everywhere. She stood next to Bai Zeman and looked at the mutated plant before looking at him and responding. I think you should try the red fruit. Bai Zeman nodded with a frown, indeed. I was thinking the same thing as you. If it's something bad, the red fruit will have the worst possible effect. But if it's something good, then it will be my loss since I will have wasted a fully mature fruit. Loss and gain go hand in hand just like life and death. Lilith shrugged and pointed. This was an irrefutable truth even before the soul record arrived on earth but after the arrival of this unknown entity, such truth became much more accentuated and evident. After listening to Lilith and realizing that they both thought alike, Bai Zeman nodded silently before looking at Yang Pei but seeing his current condition he couldn't help but laugh. You seem to have him enchanted even without looking at him, Lilith. That's why men are so boring. She rolled her eyes before looking at him with a seemingly shy slight smile and whispered, but you look interesting to me. Bai Zeman didn't dare look at her too much at this point. He really couldn't understand how a being could be so seductive with such an elegant body but at the same time have attitudes that a small, immature girl who had not yet been contaminated and corrupted by the outside world would have. Seizing the opportunity, he took one of the three red fruits carefully before stepping forward and throwing it into Yang Pei's mouth. The young man who was part of the four leaders of the four big boss camp had not closed his mouth from the moment Lilith had shown herself. 
Yang Pei's face changed completely and hurriedly tried to spit out the mutated fruit. But how could Bai Zeman let him do as he pleased? With a strong punch, Yang Pei was forced to swallow the small red fruit along with a few teeth in the process. Cough, you bastard! Cough, cough, what did you feed me? Yang Pei coughed fiercely and barked curses. However, suddenly his face turned completely red and his eyes rolled back before he fainted on the spot. Bai Zeman frowned and when checking he realized that in fact, Yang Pei's temperature had risen and he was now suffering from a high fever. And now what's wrong? Bai Zeman scratched his head at a loss. His body didn't explode but something good didn't happen either. He 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 that's because good always comes hand in hand with bad. Haven't you understood that yet? Lilith giggled softly and disappeared from sight not before pointing out, tomorrow will probably show the effects of the fruit. Look forward to it. Left alone once again, Bai Zeman sighed and picked up the unconscious body while muttering, at least he didn't explode in a mist of blood. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. The group continued moving in a southerly direction until dusk, traveling approximately 30 kilometers before stopping as the sun was beginning to set and riding through the night was not a good idea. Along the way they encountered several obstacles that made the speed of the eight buses and the Dongfang truck extremely slow. After all, all nine were large vehicles so to avoid accidents the drivers had no choice but to exercise caution. As Luo Cheng pointed out, the four big boss camp was only 20 kilometers away from this place in a southeasterly direction. Therefore, before starting to move, Bai Zeman and the rest decided to take a proper rest for the night. Inside a five-story hotel, five zombies staggered along the corridor. Their pale faces and white eyes devoid of the sparkle of life along with their blood-stained teeth gave them a grotesque appearance that no one in their right mind would want to approach. Wu Yujun observed as the five zombies slowly approached and could not help but notice that these creatures seemed to become slower and slower. However, it was not the zombies who became slower, it was she who became faster every time she evolved and absorbed soul power from an enemy. She opened the palm of her delicate hand and looked at the small seeds lying silently before activating her first order plant empowerment skill. Five small seeds glowed and under her command shot out at full speed breaking the air that tried to slow them down. Before the five zombies could react, a finger-thick hole appeared in the head of each of them, killing them with ease. Li Na, Gao Min, and Fan Wu looked at their friend with envious eyes. They too wanted to be able to kill zombies like she did. Too bad, they didn't have the courage to fight. Within half an hour, the five floors of the hotel were cleared of all standing zombies and the survivors dragged the bodies to the rooms on the top floor before locking the doors firmly from the outside. Soon, night descended and an important conference was once again underway. The main floor of the hotel was separated into different sections, reception, kitchen, a huge general lounge or shared living room, a restaurant, bathrooms, etc. Actually, the group had separated into two parts within the initial floor. The first group consisted of almost 400 people and was formed by all the survivors regardless of whether they were workers or non-workers. Seated at several tables in the area that had been designated as a restaurant in the past, the group was currently eating their respective dinners with enthusiasm. However, although those who were unwilling to work and those who did work were together, the differences were obvious if one looked at their bowls. While the leeches or parasites had a bowl filled with white rice, those who did any kind of logistical work enjoyed rice, vegetables, and even a small piece of fresh meat. This was the main rule of the group. Those who did not want to work would definitely not starve, but they also had no right to complain and could only eat three bowls of white rice or gruel a day with an extra steamed bun at breakfast and in the evening. Even if some were unhappy, they knew that complaining would not bring anything good. Today a dozen people had been killed by Bai Zeman and his subordinates so obviously it was better not to provoke them, moreover, seeing how some female students who were rescued from the female dormitory after almost a week of starvation ate with delighted expressions the white rice which they abhorred, some smarter ones realized that perhaps they were more privileged than they thought. On the other hand, the second group was far smaller and consisted of just over ten people. 
In the living room of the hotel, separated by a double door from the restaurant, was a large wooden table that had been moved to the center of the room. On the table were all kinds of delicious dishes, fried evolved beast meat, vegetable and meat soup, rice, noodles with different sauces, sautéed vegetables, baked fish, there were even five big bottles of soda for everyone to help themselves at will. The difference between what this group of people ate and the food of those outside the hall was so great that there was no comparison to begin with. Sitting at the head end of the table, Bai Zimin looked at the people present one by one, Shang Guan Bing Shui, Chen He, Wu Yujun, Fu Suifeng, Cai Jing Ai Ai, Zhong De, Kong Lan, even Gao Min, Fan Wu and Li Na were present. Although the latter three had no right to be present, because they were good friends with Shang Guan Bing Shui and Wu Yujun, no one said anything about it. After all, it was natural that as leaders they had privileges and bringing a couple more people was not a problem considering their current rations. For example, if Bai Zimin wanted to bring a couple of friends for dinner here, no one would say anything about it since it was his right as someone who fought at the front and as the group's main fighter. I'd like to hear what opinion you have about the information we got today from the mouths of those road thieves. Bai Zimin finally broke the silence, initiating tonight's main topic. I think we should try to communicate with them somehow and cooperate. Chen He proposed in a serious voice, I'm sure if we show the strength of our group those guys who call themselves four big bosses will have to change their attitude toward the survivors. Chen He, are you crazy? Wu Yujun looked at him in shock and shook her head without hesitation, those men abused several women as far as we know until now and have even killed innocents just because of the slightest disturbance or discomfort. How can we cooperate with people like that? Cai Jing Ai Ai also shook her head and disagreed with his proposal, not only that. Today we killed several militants of the four big bosses camp group. I don't think they will take the matter casually. Hearing the reasoning of the two women, Chen He became silent and fell into deep contemplation as he somehow realized that the passive and friendly encounter he wanted would not work so easily. Finally, Shang Guan Bing Shui also expressed her opinion, I think we should sneak in. Pass ourselves off as normal survivors and study the place before deciding what to do. Kong Lan nodded in agreement and pointed out, although our group is strong, we can't forget that they have over 50 men armed with modern firearms while we only have 5 Type 54 pistols with less than 40 rounds of ammunition in total. It would be better to be a little cautious to prevent major problems. Bai Zeman tapped his finger on the table softly as he fell into deep contemplation before looking at the person standing behind him as if she were his personal servant. What does it look like to you, Lily? Everyone's strange gaze fell on the woman of seemingly average appearance but with a bombshell body that could not be hidden by her baggy dress. This person was, of course, Lilith. She had suppressed her charm as much as possible and her beautiful face had been changed to that of a slightly above average woman before showing herself to everyone. The explanation was simple and Bai Zeman said that she was a solitary survivor who had hidden herself in the hotel's storeroom, where there were a few food reserves. However, everyone found the closeness with which the two acted very strange considering that they had only met a few hours before. Still, no one mentioned anything about it and no further questions were asked despite the suspicion. Although Lilith had the appearance of an average European woman, her charming aura as a higher existence could not be completely suppressed. Therefore, no matter whether it was Chen He or any other male survivor, everyone secretly stole glances at her. Before I answer your question, may I know if you, Master, intends to take control of the four big bosses camp or simply try to cooperate with the three leaders. Lilith, who was currently acting as a survivor named Lily, asked in a respectful voice. Bai Zeman almost choked while drinking a glass of Sprite when he heard the way she referred to him. The others couldn't help but give him strange looks and Shang Guan Bing Shui looked at him as if he was a pervert. Secretly gritting his teeth and ignoring the strange looks he was receiving, he replied in a normal voice, I want to take control of the entire camp. From firearms to supplies and survivors. Everything. Everyone's face changed slightly, the exception being Wu Yujun and Shang Guan Bing Shui, 
who had a look that suggested saying, it turned out that way in the end. On the other hand, Fu Suifeng and Zhong De looked at each other and could not help but smile while sighing in relief. Since Bai Zeman decided to conquer the place, once he tasted the feeling of ruling it was highly implausible that he would surrender to the old Chinese government. I see. Continuing in her role as Bai Zeman's personal servant, Lilith thought for a moment before explaining her idea, I think the two ladies' words are correct and the best option is to infiltrate. Pretending to be an ordinary survivor you can not only get information about the important checkpoints that need to be attacked first, but you can also gather manpower from the inside. That idea is great. Shang Guanbing Shue's eyes glittered and looked at her appreciatively, if what that man named Luo Cheng and the rest said is true, then many survivors must be unhappy due to the way they are treated by the camp leaders but without receiving proper food. If we can bring them to our side they can certainly be of much help in case of need. Bai Zeman remained silent for a minute or two until he finally decided, then so be it. Tomorrow when the sun rises, Fu Suifeng and Zhong De will come with me to the four big bosses camp and we will pretend to be survivors to study the area before finally launching an attack to take control of the village. Shang Guanbing Shue frowned and asked in confusion, why only the three of you? Bai Zeman looked at her for a moment and replied in a flat voice, You, Wu Yujun, and Chen He are no good. What do you mean? Wu Yujun looked at him with a playful smile, apparently already knowing the answer. You would attract too much attention. Bai Zeman shrugged and said casually, You two are two beautiful women and Chen He is too handsome. On the other hand, Fu Suifeng, Zhong Dei, and me are just average at best and won't attract anyone's attention after a few simple arrangements. Hearing Bai Zeman's reply, Chen He unconsciously felt a little embarrassed but at the same time slightly proud because of his appearance. As for Shang Guanbing Shue, she finally silently accepted his reasoning and was secretly a little surprised as Bai Zeman was not praising her on her appearance he was simply stating facts with complete indifference. Even if she didn't particularly care about her appearance, Shang Guanbing Shue was a very smart woman and naturally knew that to men she was beautiful to the point where she sometimes appeared to be dazzling. Therefore, it was a rarity for someone not to praise her or actively try to court her. For a split second, she even thought that maybe they could be friends. You think so? Wu Yujun stared at him and said with an honest expression, I think you're quite handsome if we're talking physically. Especially lately. Bai Zeman chuckled and shook his head, reluctant to comment on the matter. He knew better than anyone that his appearance wasn't dazzling by any means, but it wasn't bad either, it was just that he didn't think a beauty like Wu Yujun, who had seen handsome men like Chen He since she was a child, would think he was handsome. Lilith looked at him from behind and secretly laughed. Bai Zeman might not notice it himself and even for the people around him, it would be different to notice it as the gradual change was hard to see. However, she could notice how very slowly, his appearance improved little by little, the more he leveled up, the more it improved. The reason Wu Yujun said that especially lately was due to Bai Zeman's jump to first order, a great milestone for any existence. During dinner, they discussed a few more details and when everyone had eaten their fill they went to sleep comfortably. For the first time in half a month, everyone had beds to sleep in so practically every survivor went to sleep with a smile. Something that used to be normal could now bring them so much joy. This was another proof that human beings really didn't know how to enjoy the small details. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. After a refreshing night's sleep after such an eventful day of riding in which they were even threatened by a group of militants with guns, all the survivors inside the hotel woke up and the people in charge of food began to prepare breakfast. Since the site was approximately 20 kilometers away from the village where the four big bosses camp was located, all activities that required going out were ceased to avoid being noticed. As for Bai Zeman, he was currently sitting in the back seat of a pickup truck that had been taken yesterday from the militants. Driving, Zhongda had a stoic expression as most of the time, and Fu Suifeng, who was sitting in the passenger seat, looked nervous as he constantly rubbed his hands together while looking out the window cautiously. All three wore tattered clothes with dusty faces and disheveled hair. 
The stink was so unbearable that they looked like someone who hadn't bathed for at least a week and if it wasn't for the fact that the three of them had already gotten used to the nauseating smell of blood and organs every time they killed zombies, they couldn't have endured it for that long. No matter how much one looked at them, they definitely looked like wanderers, survivors who managed to evade being eaten by sheer luck and coincidence. After about 30 minutes, Bai Zeman looked ahead and ordered, Zhongde, stop the pickup truck here. Without hesitation, Zhongde stopped the pickup truck at the edge of the road next to a small building. Bai Zeman got out, followed by the other two, and they entered the building. He hid most of the contents of his fat backpack before taking a large plastic bag and putting in a small bag with 300 grams of rice and a carton of milk before stepping out again and continuing the ride south. Ten minutes later, Bai Zeman narrowed his eyes and saw that a hundred meters ahead there were several wooden fences surrounding a small village as well as what appeared to be a watchtower about five meters high constructed with wood. Two militants who were joking with each other without much concern seemed to be the custodians of the gate. Hearing the sound of the approaching engine, the two immediately became alert and raised their guns. Stop the vehicle and get down slowly or else we will shoot. One of the militants shouted loudly. Zhongda looked at Bai Zeman and seeing him nod slightly stopped the vehicle gradually until it came to a complete stop about 10 meters far from the entrance to the village. Fu Suifeng, you talk with them. Bai Zeman ordered and got out without waiting for a reply. As he got off the vehicle, he narrowed his eyes slightly and realized that the firearm in the militant's hands was actually two Type 79 submachine guns. Although it was an old weapon that began to be mass-produced in the year 1983, it was a relatively powerful gun as it was capable of shooting up to 1,000 rounds per minute. Of course, this would only be possible if it were not for its 20-round magazine capacity. Still, with two Type 79 submachine guns at the forefront, even Zhongda and Fu Suifeng could die if they were not careful. Four eyes, are you fucking deaf? The militant who warned before yelled when he saw that Fu Suifeng still didn't get off the pickup truck and stepped forward, if you don't get off the damn car in five seconds I'll fill you with holes and feed you to the pigs. Fu Suifeng finally reacted and quickly got off the vehicle. Being pointed at by such a weapon, his legs trembled and his face turned pale with fear. This was a Type 79 submachine gun, it was a completely different gun compared to the Type 54 pistol with which the militants assaulted them yesterday. Move! Bai Zeman whispered softly and walked forward followed closely by the other two. Damn, wasting our time! The militant from before grumbled again before looking the three up and down with a frown, Where did you three come from? What are you coming to this place to do? This territory belongs to the four big bosses. Fu Suifeng looked at Bai Zeman subtly before he began to explain stammering, We three are survivors from Beijing University. We escaped by fortune a few days ago and went into hiding. The reason Bai Zeman made Fu Suifeng speak was precisely because of the nerves he felt. The militants could tell something was wrong if he or Zhongda spoke too much, after all. Neither of them was actors and were too calm by nature. As Fu Suifeng answered questions, Bai Zeman scanned the surroundings subtly and was secretly surprised. The wooden fences were useless for defending the village as a single evolved beast could easily tear them out of the ground. However, for normal low-level zombies that had no strength, these wooden fences were a major obstacle that could buy some time for the survivors. In the streets, there were occasional people passing by wearing somewhat dirty and tattered clothes. The expressions of almost everyone were dark and their eyes glittered with fear as they cautiously looked around. Most people were sitting outside their homes, staring at nothing with dead faces. Occasionally someone would squirm on the ground clutching their stomach hungrily, which was a clear sign that all these people had eaten too little or even nothing for quite some time. Hey! What are you bringing inside that bag? The other militant seemed to be bored when he noticed the plastic bag in Bai Zeman's hands and immediately inquired loudly. Bai Zeman looked at the militant and tried to put on a scared expression which failed miserably. In the end, in order not to cause any problems, he simply opened the bag quietly and showed the contents. Damn, is this guy mute or something? 
The second militant muttered and casually looked inside the bag without much expectation. However, when he and his buddy saw the small bag with rice and the milk carton, their eyes lit up. The first militant grabbed the small bag of rice and weighed it with his hand casually before exclaiming, Damn it! It is more than 200 grams of white rice. The second militant also looked surprised and snatched the bag of rice from him to check it by himself. In the camp, supplies were tightly controlled by the strongest of the four bosses, Yaki Gong. Normally, a person who did not work could only eat some rice made into mush diluted with water to form something similar to gruel but consisting mainly of water. Except for the militants with guns who went out to risk their lives to fetch supplies, everyone inside the village was slowly starving to death. The four bosses obviously had no idea how to lead so many people as they did not even delegate jobs to give the village some brightness and order. Even for these two militants guarding the entrance 500 grams of rice was small wealth. Working all day standing guard, they could at most earn 40 grams of rice each. Bai Zemin's eyes glittered coldly. Although he already expected something like this, the brazen robbery still upset him. For the past half month, no one had dared to speak to him in such a tone, let alone try to steal from him, so naturally, his patience was wearing thin but he endured and said nothing. The militants looked at each other before looking at the three of them. The first militant to speak said in a deep voice, As we are magnanimous, we will not examine your belongings and you can leave with that milk carton. As a token of kindness, let me tell you that west of town there are a few free houses still, you can use those. Without waiting for a reply, the other militant waved his hand impatiently, Hurry up and get out of here. You smell really gross. Zhongda looked at them coldly but seeing Bai Zeman subtly shaking his head, he finally looked down. The three of them walked into the village slowly, listening to the gloating laughter of the militants. Big brother Bai, why don't we just explode their heads and take over their guns? Zhongda clenched his fists and cursed under his breath, damn those two dogs. A single blow from my fists is enough to make their heads explode into meat pulp but they dare to treat us like puppies. Bai Zeman laughed coldly and replied as he walked towards the south of the village, Don't worry. When we get control of this whole place I'll see to it that they spit out those 500 grams of rice completely even if I have to make them work as mules. Considering the rations they had, 500 grams of rice could not be considered too much. However, no one would feel good if they were robbed and then acted as if nothing had happened, let alone by Zeman, who was slowly getting used to being in a position of power. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. The village was not very large and in the past, only about 60 or 70 families lived there. However, due to the search for supplies carried out periodically by the four bosses, the number of survivors had increased exponentially so that makeshift huts had to be built. Bai Zeman and the rest saw how a group of young children between 8 and 14 years old ran barefoot everywhere. They were all looking for small bugs that had not yet begun to mutate or tree bark to fill their empty stomachs. As the world changed, these children were also forced to change and leave their innocence behind to adapt to the new rules if they wanted to survive. After walking for about five minutes, the group of three stopped in front of an ordinary-looking small house. The door was firmly closed but from outside they could hear a sweet voice singing like a happy bird coming from inside, which was a sharp contrast to the scene outside. When Bai Zeman knocked softly on the wooden door and took a step back, the singing stopped and a sweet childish voice rang out, One second please. A moment later, the door opened and the head of a little girl peeked out who immediately looked at them with her big eyes filled with curiosity. This. Hello. My name is Luo Ning, may I know what do you need? Bai Zeman looked at the girl in front of him with the same degree of curiosity she seemed to feel as she looked at them. She was small, her body thin and petite without any sign of maturity, which was completely normal considering she was only nine years old. Her hair was as black as ink and her face extremely pretty like that of a porcelain doll. But the most striking thing was her eyes. On the way here, Bai Zeman had seen other children and easily noticed that they all had cunning looks as they scanned the surroundings, like little foxes waiting for the perfect opportunity to launch an assault. However, 
the eyes of the little girl in front of him were like two shining gems free of any impurity, it was as if even when the outside world had turned into hell it was incapable of staining her heart. Just as she was happily singing a few moments ago inside the small house, it was as if the inside and outside were different dimensions. Apparently that Luo Cheng guy did a good job taking care of his little sister. Bai Zeman silently analyzed as he crouched down to be at the girl's level. You are Luo Ning? My name is Bai Zeman and these two are my friends Fu Suifeng and Zhong Di. Bai Zeman smiled for the first time in a long time, a real smile and not a fake or forced one. Your big brother's name is Luo Cheng, isn't it? Luo Ning's eyes shone with a hint of caution and she unconsciously stepped back slightly before cautiously asking, this. Elder brothers, you are people sent by the four big village bosses? My big brother left yesterday morning but he still hasn't returned so. Seeing the girl's wariness, Bai Zeman took out the milk carton and held it forward as he said, Actually, we are friends with your brother Luo Cheng. We met yesterday a few kilometers from here and we get along well. Oh. The girl looked at the milk carton and swallowed softly. She obviously wanted it but still shook her head, Elder brother, where is my brother? Bai Zeman didn't insist and gave the milk carton to Zhongda to look after before saying, I'll take you to him tonight if you want. For now, how about giving me a walk around? I'd like to get to know the village more, if you're not too busy. Luo Ning hesitated as she had heard her big brother Luo Cheng told her not to leave the house without him present. But it had been more than a day since he had left and there had been no news from him, so she was worried, after all. Without her big brother she would not be able to survive alone in this world since he was her only source of dependability. Besides, she somehow knew that the person in front of her would not hurt her. As for how such a thing was possible when she had just met him, it was unknown. Okay. Luo Ning will take you for a walk. She closed the door and locked it with a small key she took out of her pocket before taking Bai Zemin's hand with a sweet smile. The girl didn't seem to mind the smell on his body and didn't seem to be on guard either as she started walking pulling Bai Zemin's hand while pointing out some places. That's the place where the village fighters gather every day before going out to look for supplies or people. This is where Boss Lei Su lives. Big brother, don't tell anyone but actually Boss Lei Su is a pervert with more than ten wives. This is the village square and the bosses often gather the other survivors to give orders. It is also used as a gathering point every night where a big pot of food is made and distributed to the survivors. Bai Zeman walked hand in hand with Luo Ning, and the girl enthusiastically introduced the main places of the village. Her cheerful and lively attitude attracted a lot of attention as there were often survivors turning to look at her in astonishment, as if they could not believe that in such chaos there was a person who could act in such a way. Even Bai Zeman had unconsciously relaxed feeling the tension on his body ease. Luo Ning caused that Bai Zeman unconsciously thought on his little sister Meng Chi, so the girl had really started to like him. Following them from behind, Fu Suifeng and Zhong Da were secretly surprised as this was the first time they had seen the normally cold and cruel Bai Zeman have such a gentle expression on his face. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Meanwhile, in the most luxurious villa of the village, an important discussion was taking place amidst a dark and heavy atmosphere. Sitting on a couch and enjoying the tender hands of a woman massaging his shoulders, a burly man of about 35 years old had a grim expression on his scarred face. This man was actually Ye Qigong, the strongest of the four camp leaders as well as the man with the most authority. On another couch, to Ye Qigong's right, a middle-aged man was enjoying touching the breasts of two pretty women who had barely entered their thirties. His appearance was quite decent in comparison to Ye Qigong's deformed face, however, the truth was that this man was actually cruel and sadistic. This man was Lei Su and it was said that more than three women had already died at his hands because they could not tolerate his games in bed. At the left, on another small couch, a man between 25 and 30 years old with a monkey-like appearance was constantly looking around with cautious eyes. He was the only one without a woman accompanying him, this man was the third village boss, Du Meng. What about Yang Pei? 
Lei So casually asked as he continued to caress the two women's breasts. A strange smile formed on his lips and he laughed rampantly, that idiot couldn't have amused himself with some booty? Ha ha ha! Du Meng looked at him without saying anything and his eyes glittered strangely. I don't think that's it. Ye Qigong ignored Lei Su's jokes and shook his head. Although Lei Su was a bit perverted and somewhat crazy, he was brave and could fight well so Ye Qigong tolerated him to the extent possible. I have a bad feeling. Ye Qigong muttered and the room went silent immediately. Even Lei Su stopped playing and his expression changed slightly. In the past, Ye Qigong had had several bad feelings and it was thanks to this that the three of them along with Yang Pei had managed to escape trouble. Even when the soul record came to earth, it was thanks to Ye Qigong that the three of them were able to survive. Therefore, every time something happened, Lei Su and Du Meng knew that it was no time for jokes. Ye Qigong waved his hand and the woman behind him stopped massaging him. He stood up and said in a deep voice, Du Meng, prepare your men and scout the surrounding areas but don't go too far away. Lei Su, take twenty men and go up north. It is possible that Yang Pei has encountered problems and if that's the case he might need help. Du Meng stood up without a word and went out the front door. As for Lei Su, he licked his lips and ran out anxiously since every time he went out if he found some pretty woman he could have fun first. As they walked through the streets of the village, Bai Zeman noticed that little Luo Ning often looked back before quickly turning her eyes forward. At first, he was confused by the girl's behavior but soon understood and could not help but laugh lightly. Zhong De, give that to the little girl. Bai Zeman stopped his steps and gestured backwards. Zhong De chuckled as he too had seen Luo Ning's eyes fixed on the milk carton so he took a step forward and gave it to her. Luo Ning blushed but took the milk carton. She nodded prettily and thanked him softly, thank you. Although Luo Cheng had taken care of her to the best of his ability, with the change in the world it was impossible for Luo Ning's life to go back to the way it was before. With the daily payment that Luo Cheng received she could eat enough rice to not feel hungry and also had access to some vegetables, but things like meat or luxuries like milk were not something he, a normal militant, could access. In the past, drinking a milk carton during breakfast or break time at school was normal, but Luo Ning had almost forgotten the taste after half a month of not even seeing a carton. Seeing the girl drinking with enthusiasm, the passing survivors looked at her with envy. Most of them were starving so Luo Ning's situation was too good in comparison. Because this place was very close to the village square, the number of people was quite large as everyone was eagerly and hopefully waiting for the bosses to recruit men. With guns, most of them were willing to fight and even more so when the reward was food, most of them were willing to do anything for food as the rations were not enough. Suddenly, the crowd became agitated as several armed men appeared running with a small man in the lead. That's Boss Du Ming. Luo Ning whispered softly and held on to Bai Zemin's hand as she said, My big brother told me that he is the most mysterious of the four bosses as he usually never speaks. But it is said that he is very fast, like a ghost that appears and disappears. Bai Zemin nodded silently and gently squeezed her small hand in thanks for the information. He narrowed his eyes as he hid in the crowd of survivors and observed Du Meng carefully. Everyone. Starting today, a curfew will be put in place until further notice for everyone's safety. Du Meng shouted loudly. His voice was similar to two sandpapers clashing together, extremely uncomfortable to listen to, today's meal will now be served and everyone will return in an orderly fashion to their homes. The survivors looked at each other in confusion. It was barely after 10 o'clock in the morning but they already had to return to their homes? Although some had complaints, none dared voice them and they nodded obediently. After all, for such measures to be implemented there were probably serious problems. Besides, no survivor had the courage to oppose the four village bosses. Those who had the courage had already been beheaded or cut into pieces and thrown into the pigs to be eaten. Du Meng nodded to himself as he heard no strange whispers and waved his hand. Behind him, a group of people came out carrying several carts and other cooking utensils along with a huge pot. One militant stepped forward and shouted loudly, Line up to get today's food. 
Whoever does not obey or does not line up orderly will be thrown to the zombies. The survivors trembled in fear upon hearing the threat and began to line up orderly with their heads down. Even Luoning was scared and unconsciously clung to Bai Zemin's arm tightly. As the survivors received their rations, which were basically a few grains of rice with water and nothing else, the sound of several engines roaring in the distance attracted everyone's attention. Two buses, two trucks, and four pickup trucks sped past, disappearing in a short time in the direction of the exit. The survivors panicked, thinking the zombies were approaching, so they quickly began to eat before rushing to their homes and locking the doors tightly from the inside. Bai Zeman narrowed his eyes and looked at the place where the convoy of vehicles had disappeared with a thoughtful look. A few seconds later he ordered, Let's go. Zhongda and Fu Suifeng nodded before quickly following Bai Zeman. In the distance, Du Meng narrowed his eyes and looked at the milk carton in Luo Ning's hands. His thoughtful gaze had a strange glint in it before he gave an order to a militant beside him. Bai Zeman raised an eyebrow in surprise but did not stop his steps and continued walking towards the house where Luo Ning and Luo Cheng lived. His lips curved into a cold smile that was impossible to detect. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Twenty kilometers away from the camp. Chen He was lying on the roof of a building. In his hands was a pair of binoculars they had taken the day before from the militants, looking off into the distance with a grave expression. Several hundred meters away, a convoy of vehicles that had barely been modified was rapidly approaching, raising a cloud of dust behind them like a wild beast. It's Lei Su. Luo Cheng exclaimed in a grim voice, his body in the same position as Chen He and holding a pair of binoculars. That man in front is one of the three camp bosses, Lei Su. He is even stronger than Yang Pei and bullets can't penetrate his defenses when he activates his steel armor skill. Lei Su was sitting in the passenger seat in one of the pickup trucks leading the way. Chen He could even see through the binoculars a wild smile filled with arrogance as if he was not worried about anything in the world. Chen He could not help but remember when at the beginning of the apocalypse Bai Zeman told him that his attitude would not only end up killing him, but would also end up hurting those he loved because of his insecurity. Every militant was armed and there were at least twenty men inside the different vehicles. If they continued on this path would definitely reach the hotel where the group was currently staying and with so many people it would be impossible not to be noticed unless they were given time to hide, something which considering the situation they lacked. The problem had arisen from the fact that none of them had expected the main leader Ye Qigong to be so cunning and clever, which made things difficult up to this point. Chen He sighed and pulled out the Type 54 pistol from his waist, so, if he doesn't activate his skill. That fellow is no big deal, isn't he? Luo Cheng lowered the binoculars and looked at him in surprise, yeah, well. No matter what, Lei Su is still just a human just like us. Then it's okay. Chen He nodded and aimed forward. 300 meters. 200 meters. 150 meters. Chen He sighed to himself and whispered, Don't blame me, I have no choice but to do it. Then, with a look brimming conviction, he pulled the trigger without hesitation. Ha 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 ha. Lei Su laughed jovially and tapped the board of the vehicle. In his mind, he was already imagining the scene of him having fun with several beautiful women and thinking about what kind of games he should try this time. The eyes of the militant driving the pickup truck flashed with disgust but he didn't dare to show it openly and continued driving silently. Bang. Suddenly there was a sound of gunfire from the front and the front window of the vehicle cracked. But the militant driving was more concerned about the hot liquid that had splashed on his right cheek out of nowhere. The militant looked out of the corner of his eyes in a split second and his face turned white as a sheet at what he saw. Lei Su, who was laughing like crazy a second ago, had a bullet hole right in the middle of his forehead. Blood ran down his face uncontrollably and his expression had frozen while his lifeless eyes were wide open filled with disbelief even in the face of death. SH shit. The driver of the pickup truck leading the convoy's path panicked and pushed on the brakes with a thump. The wheels of the pickup truck stopped immediately but the vehicle continued to move forward due to the remaining momentum. The rear end swayed as the sound of the braking thundered through the clearing. 
The vehicles behind also heard the gunshot and upon seeing the lead vehicle come to an abrupt stop, the drivers also pushed hard on the brakes. The sound of braking echoed everywhere and some vehicles that did not have a great distance with the vehicle in front crashed noisily into each other. The street that had been silent several days ago when humans were hiding from the zombies had suddenly become noisy and chaotic like a movie scene. Dead. Boss Lei Su died. The militant in the first pickup truck got out in panic and started screaming in alarm as he crouched behind the vehicle, looking around in fear. The militants were frightened when they heard the gunshot, but upon hearing the news of the death of the main leader in this team they all began to panic. A sniper. Take cover quickly. Damn it. Even Boss Lesu was killed how are we supposed to survive? Clutching their guns, the militants began yelling as they were shooting at the buildings in front of them. Although none of them knew where the sniper was, they had heard roughly where the shot came from. With more than 20 men firing, the bullets seemed like a golden storm of metal hitting and destroying everything in their path. The windows of some houses or buildings were shattered into pieces, walls were filled with small holes, some vehicles were turned into sieves, etc. Type 89 submachine gun, Type 81 rifle, Type 54 pistol, etc. All kinds of guns were fired uncontrollably wasting ammunition recklessly to shake off the fear of the unknown. From the top of a building just over a hundred meters away, Chen He and Luo Cheng sought cover while looking at the development with surprise. What happened? Chen He asked aloud. His face was pale as a sheet due to his first kill but the adrenaline coursing through his veins kept him alert. He did not expect that just one shot would be enough to make the enemy group which consisted of more than 20 men armed with all kinds of firearms and enough ammunition to wipe out the entire group of survivors in the hotel, collapse so easily. Chen He had only two Type 54 pistols with 15 rounds of ammunition in total, one of which had already been used to kill Lei Su before. He was preparing to fight to the death but apparently, it was not necessary. Although they all have guns, they are not soldiers with military training. Luo Cheng pointed out with a bitter smile. Because of the gunfire, he also had to raise his voice, each of them in the past was a farmer, businessman, journalist, and who knows what else. But when the apocalypse broke out, only by having a gun could they feel safe. The four bosses had recruited more than 50 men and armed them after raiding the police station near the village. These militants could fight zombies because they were slow and with guns they didn't need to get close to them at the risk of being infected. However, when facing other humans it was different. Especially when the enemy was able to kill one of the bosses so easily. With his sniper skill, Chen He's marksmanship was terrifying to the point where he was confident to hit a zombie in the head even from 200 meters away with a pistol. However, due to the lack of a suitable weapon, he had not been able to show his strength properly in the first two weeks of the apocalypse. However, as his weaponry improved, he would naturally become more powerful. Enemy. Fire. Suddenly the militants roared and began to shoot all in the same direction. When Chen He looked towards the spot he realized in fright that Shang Guan Bing Shui was running in irregular patterns dodging bullets while taking cover from different obstacles along the way. Die at once you fucking monster. A militant had bloodshot eyes as he fired in uninterrupted bursts. The fear of the unknown and seeing the enemy's ghostly speed was driving him insane. Swoosh! Shang Guanbing Shui shot out from her hiding place and waved her hand. An ice spike flew through the air under her control and struck the militant in the chest, killing him immediately and freezing the wound firmly. Although she was fast and the militants could barely aim properly as she moved relentlessly, it was inevitable that a bullet or two would hit her. However, when those bullets did hit her they were stopped by her combat dress rare grade treasure. It was precisely because of this treasure that she dared to charge into a hail of bullets. Otherwise, even she would not be crazy enough to do something that could definitely cost her life. Chen He gritted his teeth and raised the Type 54 pistol, aiming at a militant who seemed to have lost his sanity. With an extra bang sound. The militant's brains were sent flying and stained the ground creating a bloody mess. Immediately after, a hail of bullets was directed in his direction as he had been caught, 
forcing him into a passive position where he dared not raise his head casually, although he too was quick and his aim terrifying, a shot in the head would give him the same fate suffered by Lesa earlier. With the target now clear, the militants began to calm down a bit and one of them seemed to take the temporary lead as bullets began to be used wisely. Instead of firing relentlessly, steady bursts began to be fired every few seconds. Although the saving of ammunition was obvious, the pressure on the enemy would also become less strong as a consequence. Besides, even so, the ammunition would soon run out, after all, although Lesa was one of the bosses he could not bring too much with him and they only had about 2,000 ammunition in a total of which more than 500 had been wasted when the battle broke out. Shang Guanbing Shui continued to dodge between the buildings and cars, constantly throwing weapons created with her ice maker skill at the enemy. After five minutes she had already claimed the lives of ten militants but even then her face remained impassive. Because she attracted the most attention, Chen He had managed to take out two other militants but in an oversight was shot in the arm. Seeing Shang Guanbing Shui charging like an unstoppable killing machine, the five militants on their feet knew they could not stop her so they immediately threw their weapons to the ground and knelt down. We surrender. We are surrendering. Don't kill me. We were just following orders to survive. None of them wanted to die, it was in the DNA genetics of every living being. Therefore, seeing Shang Guanbing Shui being immune to bullets, using terrifying skills, and her frightening speed, the remaining militants seemed to wake up and without hesitation surrendered. Shang Guanbing Shui also did not continue massacring and reduced the five unarmed militants with ease. Soon after, Kong Lan and Cai Jing Ai Ai appeared on the scene. As the only healer, Kong Lan used her skill on Chen He's wounded arm once. As for the second time, she did not dare to use it in case Bai Zeman or someone else needed help. No one said anything regarding this and Chen He thanked her with a polite smile, to which she responded by nodding calmly. As for Cai Jing Ai Ai, she along with Shang Guan Bing Shui and Luo Cheng were asking questions to the five militants who had been tied with strings tightly. After all, the convoy's appearance had been too sudden and everyone assumed that Bai Zeman might have encountered some problems. Unfortunately, the only one who might know something about it was Lei Su but his head had already been exploded by Chen He even before the battle fully erupted. Fortunately, just when Shang Guanbing Shui was about to suggest charging into the village and taking advantage of the fact that the enemy forces had been weakened, Fu Suifeng appeared like a ghost in front of everyone before anyone noticed. Big Brother Bai also doesn't know why there was such a big move suddenly. Fu Suifeng looked at Shang Guanbing Shui and shook his head before saying confidently, however, he sent me to say that tonight the village will be conquered by him. Do he need us to do anything? Chen He asked with a slight grimace of pain. Although the wound had stopped bleeding, it was still there and the pain persisted. This was the first time he had ever been shot or found himself in a crossfire with other humans so fear still struck his heart. Fu Suifeng looked at him and said with a mocking smile, Big Brother Bai said that you just have to block the exit of the village. He will take care of cleaning up the trash. Cai Jing Ai Ai nodded and said confidently, with his strength, he can easily take care of the whole village. Even if it's thirty armed men. Kong Lan looked at her and chuckled under her breath, although your statement is quite bold considering it's thirty machine guns and other guns against one unarmed human being, I can't find words to refute what you said. Shang Guanbing Shui looked at the two girls and shook her head, let's prepare just in case. The chatter stopped and everyone began to prepare in case Bai Zeman needed help. Fu Suifeng could easily return to the village unnoticed using his stealth skill, but Bai Zeman had told him that it wasn't necessary so he decided to stay and help out here. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Back at the four big bosses camp, Bai Zeman was looking over the house where Luo Ning and Luo Cheng had been living. It was a normal house, had two rooms, a living room that also functioned as a dining room, a kitchen, and a bathroom. Although it didn't have many luxuries and the TV channels were dead, everything was properly tidy and it was hard to find even a speck of dust on the furniture. Luo Ning, you keep this place clean all by yourself. 
Bai Zeman looked at her as she wiped a flannel cloth on the wooden table and couldn't help but let his eyes light up with a hint of praise. M.M. The girl nodded happily and replied while humming a nursery rhyme, Big brother is too busy killing zombies, so I cook what I can and clean the house too. I have nothing to do anyway and going out is dangerous so at least I can entertain myself like this. That's quite admirable for a girl your age. Bai Zeman stood up and began to help the girl as they chatted about casual matters. Suddenly, he felt it was a regret that he hadn't brought more things with him or asked Fu Suifeng to bring some cakes when brought his sword today. As night fell, Luo Ning prepared the dinner. Although it was actually simple. She looked at the white rice with half a sausage in Bai Zeman's bowl and lowered her head as she whispered softly, Elder brother, I'm so sorry. Currently, our family only has this. Actually, a meal with some meat was very luxurious and the sausage that Luo Ning had cooked was a rarity that Luo Cheng had obtained only because he discovered a storage cellar with provisions in the past and the four bosses generously rewarded him. That sausage was the best she could make at present and usually she only ate rice with some bread. Bai Zeman looked at the food on the table and his eyes had a complicated glint in them. For the past two weeks, he had eaten like a king. Meat, fish, vegetables, legumes. Basically, he had everything he would like to have. However, it was only when he saw the bowl in front of him that he really realized how lucky he was. Don't worry, little girl. He smiled softly and as he put the white rice in his mouth, he replied, My family didn't have much money before either so eating rice or noodles alone was an occasional occurrence. He wasn't lying. He really wasn't picky about food. It was just that sometimes one needed a small reminder in the present so as not to forget the past. Seeing him eat without any displeasure or discomfort, the girl sighed and giggled happily before she began to eat joyfully. The current Bai Zeman had already showered and Luo Ning had given him some of Luo Cheng's clothes, so he did not feel uncomfortable. Under such an atmosphere, the two ate while occasionally saying a few words. As for Zhong Dei, he had another mission currently so he was not present. Unfortunately, all good things had to come to an end. Even more so in this new apocalyptic world. Blood will, 1.2% slash 50%. Bai Zeman lowered his chopsticks softly and looked out the window. However, all he saw was darkness. Just in time. I really need to release some frustration. He muttered under his breath. At. Luo Ning looked at him and tilted her head in confusion, did you say something? He stood up and under the girl's confused eyes, he whispered, sleep for now, little Luo Ning. When you wake up, I'll let you eat as much as you want until you go with a happy smile to bed. Before the little girl could respond, Bai Zeman pressed a specific point on her neck and she closed her eyes, falling unconscious seconds later. His special forces soldier skill was truly incredible, as it had a lot of knowledge about different martial arts and about the human body. Therefore, it was easy for him to put a person to sleep without hurting her in any way. Not even two seconds later, a dozen machine guns started firing from the outside to the inside. The wooden door was shattered, the windows destroyed, and everything inside the house was riddled with bullets. Four militants appeared at the windows with grenades in their hands. After removing the safety catch, they threw them inside without any hesitation. Bang! 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 The grenades exploded like thunder in the middle of the night and the small house collapsed completely after losing the support of several steel beams. Just as the militants stopped firing at the sight of the destruction, a shadow shot out like a whirlwind from within the cloud of dust and the pile of rubble.